uh, host Ferris State at 7.30 p.m. Meanwhile, Saginaw Valley State and Lawrence Tech dual battle number two versus number 15 there. Saginaw trying to lobby their spot into St. Louis. We're going to take a break and get you ready for some more of the pregame show and get ready for our senior night lineup celebrating the 10 that are graduating here uh, from Martin Ice Arena. Stick with us. You're watching the pregame show on CCHM. Welcome inside Martin Ice Arena for this senior night matchup, the final regular season game for these Chippewas on home ice. I'm Devin Serra alongside my partner Reagan Cleves. We apologize for some of those technical difficulties. You might have seen our faces for just a few moments, but no audio. We've got those fixed now. Let's catch you up very briefly on what we talked about. Michigan took down CMU last night 4-2 for their third straight victory over the Chippewas, led by Owen DeVries with two goals. Owen Campbell, number six for Central, the only goal scorer for them in that game. And Reagan looking at the MCHC standings, Michigan at that four spot, one behind Oakland, who had an overtime loss to Northwood yesterday, a shocker, but they sit one spot above them. Michigan and CME could be looking at back-to-back -back matchups heading into the MCHC tournament. And they will be, since Oakland with that overtime loss gained a point. They were two points ahead of Michigan, or four points ahead of Michigan coming into the weekend. That extra point puts them out of reach of the Wolverines. The only thing that can change in the MCHC East is now Saginaw Valley State and Oakland. If Oakland loses tonight, SVSU clinches that second spot. If SVSU loses again to Lawrence Tech and Oakland beats Northwood in their series finale tonight, Oakland would leapfrog the Cardinals and move into second place. The difference there is who's going to play Northwood in the first round. And look out, those Timberwolves are hot. Last we checked, Oakland and Northwood were tied at two apiece heading into the third period. We'll have a score update as soon as we can, but the standings look like this. Lawrence Tech first in the MC East, followed by Saginaw, Oakland, Michigan, Central Michigan, Northwood, U of M Flint, and Adrian. Now Reagan looking forward at these two teams on the ice today. This is the final game of the regular season, as we mentioned. Michigan with a record of 17-5, 1-0 overall. They have been getting hot as of late. Only 13 in the country, but we know this Michigan team likes to do that in this time of the year. Exactly. We've seen it the last couple of seasons. They haven't necessarily finished at the top of the division, but they have been able to gain that momentum going into the final uh, tournament, and they've usually made it pretty far. Last year, they made it to the national, or they made it to the uh, MCHC final, losing to, or, yeah, losing to Hope, and then in the national tournament, they ended up beating Hope in the national championship. Reigning national champions, you said it. Their only losses this year are to MCHC opponents. For Central Michigan, they have won four straight games at home, which bodes well for them. The longest such stretch of this season, only six penalty minutes allowed in that 4-2 to loss last night. That is a season low. And as we mentioned, the final time tonight they will play here before they go on to the MCHC tourney in Crystal Fieldhouse. Series history looks like this. Michigan leads it 15-8, 1-0 all time. They've won eight of the last ten. The last time the Chippewas defeated the Wolverines, well, February 8th, 2022 in Canton, thanks to head coach Brennan Martin's overtime victory. Reagan, briefly, let's get real quick to your impact players. 
Uh, so for CMU, uh, Devin, I think main impact player is gonna uh, has to be Owen Campbell. He had two goals last night. He, uh, he's my impact player for CMU tonight. For Michigan, on the other side of the ice, Owen DeVries had two goals, two really beautiful goals. Deflections out in front of Caleb Woolery. He did a really good job uh, giving Michigan that win. All righty, we're going to step aside for just a moment and take it to break. We'll come back with more of the pregame show and get you ready for this senior night ceremony. We're going to honor the 10 seniors on the ice for the Chippewas and get you caught up with some more. Don't go anywhere. We're just getting started for the final dance at Martin this year. Live on
your Central Michigan Chippewas. Tonight, we honor the 10 seniors who have dedicated their collegiate career to this club for the past years. Please join us at celebrating these players and their families tonight. Our first senior, number 11, Kyle Robinson. Senior is number 29, Sam Zabelson. <laughs> Sam is from Merrick, New York, and is majoring in finance. His plan after graduating is to find a job either in Michigan or back home in New York. Depending on where he finds a job, he's hoping to further his education in information systems. Sam's favorite CMU hockey memory was 1006 South Main Street. As advice to incoming freshmen, enjoy every minute. It goes by fast and you never know when it can come to an end. Senior is number 77, Luke Vasilovich. <laughs> Luke is from the Brickville, Illinois, and is majoring in marketing and sales. His plans after graduating is to move back home and enter corporate America. Luke's favorite CMU hockey memory were all his trips he has gone on and all the people he has met, especially his friend, Will Rippoon. His favorite game while playing at Central was the outdoor game against Texas at Clark Park. Luke's advice to incoming freshmen, whatever you do, always give 100% unless you're donating blood. his master's degree and be successful. Ritter's favorite CMU hockey memory was beating Lawrence Tech 
in the MCHC playoffs last year. It was a back and forth game the whole time and was the most enjoyable game he's ever been a part of. Ritter's advice to incoming freshmen, don't take anything for granted, both in the game of hockey and in life. Live and play each day like it is your last. Our next senior is the alternate captain, number 24, Spencer Messina. Spencer is from Rosemont, Illinois, and is majoring in finance. His plan after graduating is to go back to Chicago and go to work. Messina's favorite CMU hockey memory was traveling to play Florida Gulf Coast last season. His favorite game while playing at Central was the outdoor game in Detroit his sophomore year. His advice to incoming freshmen, don't take your time for granted. It goes by really fast and stay in touch with as many guys as you can. Our next senior, another alternate captain, number 27, Nathan Bottles. Nathan is from Williamston, Michigan, and is majoring in actuarial science and statistics. His plan after graduating is to travel and then pursue a career in the actuarial field. Bottles' favorite CMU hockey memory was his first time on campus meeting his future teammates and friends. His favorite game while playing at Central was coming back and beating GVSU at home last year, 6-4. Nathan's advice to incoming freshmen, stay on top of your school, come to the rink, and work hard. Win games, continue to build a culture, and bring a national championship to Mount Pleasant. Our next senior is number 71, Jay Nadu. Jay is from Novi, Michigan and is majoring in marketing. His plan after graduating is to continue to pursue a full-time sales career with Sunrun and venture into real estate. Nadu's favorite CMU hockey memory was flying on the plane to Florida Gulf Coast. His favorite game while playing at Central was beating number two Missouri State in the Miami, Ohio Showcase last year. Jay's advice to incoming freshmen, make close bonds with the guys that step on the ice with you because those are the same people putting their blood, sweat, and tears into the team. These guys will have your back when you need them and will create lifelong relationships with good people. Our next senior is number five, Andrew Porzunde. Andrew is from Macomb, Michigan and is majoring in mechanical engineering. His plan after graduating is to find a job and travel the world with his girlfriend, Maddie. Porzo's favorite CMU hockey memory was getting up at 6 a.m. every Wednesday for practice. His favorite game while playing at Central was beating Hope his freshman year to win the Vezina Cup. Andrew's advice to incoming freshmen, 
play with grit, and do everything for a purpose. Our next senior is number eight, Brendan Schultz. <laughs> Brendan is from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and is majoring in marketing and professional sales. His plan after graduating is to join the workforce and enjoy time with his family and friends. Schultz's favorite CMU hockey memory was flying on the plane to Florida Gulf Coast. His favorite game while playing at Central was bouncing back and beating Oakland 2-1 to one to start off the semester. Brendan's advice to incoming freshmen, work hard and come to the rink engaged every day, and always think of ways you can become better. Our next senior is number 12, Connor Beamish. Connor is from Burnaby, British Columbia, and is majoring in enterprise software. His plan after graduating to work is to work as an SAP consultant in Texas. Beamish's favorite CMU hockey memory was the outdoor game in Clark Park. His favorite game while playing at Central was beating Bowling Green in the Winter Showcase. Connor's advice to incoming freshmen, there is always going to be someone better than you. Just make sure they don't outwork you. And finally, last and certainly not least, we would like to recognize our longtime broadcaster, CCHN's very own Devin Sarah. <laughs> Devin is majoring in broadcast and cinematic arts with a double minor in advertising and professional sales. His plans after graduating is to work for a network broadcasting network broadcast covering collegiate hockey and professional sports, particularly hockey. Devin's favorite game he called was last year when Central upset number two Missouri State in the Miami of Ohio Showcase. His favorite CMU hockey memory was back in 2022 when Central took down Lawrence Tech in the MCHC playoffs. His advice to incoming freshmen, be humble. Thank the people all around you because they are the ones that keep you going. Be grateful for every moment, either good or bad. And make sure the audio is on. Fans, your 2023-24 seniors, fire up chips.
those are your seniors as introduced by our public address announcer, Michael Rosencrantz. We'll step aside. When 1-7 gets back up into the broadcast booth, we'll finish out our pregame show with a look at our impact players, keys to the game, and our scratches here on CCHN.
Warm-ups are over, ceremonies are over. It's time to play some hockey for the final time. This year at Martin Ice Arena, welcome you inside the confines. Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Devin Sarah, Reagan Clues to my right. And what a ceremony we had, a long 20 minutes. But we got to honor <laughs> 10 seniors on the ice. A great tribute to many of these players that have been with CMU Division Three for a while, the likes of Porzonic and Nadu, a couple of other Division Two guys. And on the other side of things, you get a great matchup against the number 13 team in the country. Yeah, indeed you do. And this Michigan team has faced some up and downs this year, Devin. But as of late, they've been heating up and they're playing Central Michigan at the right time. Yeah. And Reagan, first we need to get to your keys to the game real quick, presented by CMHIceHockey.com. We wanted your pre impact players. One of those was a senior, Jay Nadu. Who are you looking for for CMU to come out on top? Yeah, so our keys to the game uh, here tonight for CMU, really you have to be able to stay out of the penalty box. You were uh, three for three on the PK last night, but you can't keep doing that to yourself. You gotta stay out of the box and you gotta convert on those power play opportunities that you do get. Second, do not fall behind in this game. This, ga this Michigan team plays great from ahead, but they do not really play well from behind. So if you can get out ahead against these Wolverines, put some pressure on Aaron Locke and the likes of that defense for, uh, for the Michigan Wolverines, you can come out on top. Yeah, it's a big thing for them to start well. Remember, they have not won a game this year when trailing in the third period. The last time they did that was well against Lawrence Tech in the MCHC second round two seasons ago. Starting lineups are underway for both squads. Central Michigan to our left in their white uniforms this evening. They went with the color rush last night. Michigan with those maize colors. That's the same sweater that they beat Hope College with in the national championship. This is the reigning champion for the first time. Yeah, indeed. And this is, uh, for, for, for these two teams, this is the second of three consecutive games that they will play against each other uh, in the next two weeks, Devin. They played their first game yesterday, and now the fourth and the fifth seeds, uh, everything except the second and the third seed in the MCHC East Division is locked up. So these two teams are going to play each other next Friday. It is set. It is set and done. If CMU can get a win tonight, take some momentum into that game in the playoffs because that's when it really, uh, that's really when the rubber meets the road and the game starts to, the game matters. Yeah, you know, I asked their head coach, Callum Stripling, about that on the Michigan bench and I said, do you know their fate is against this team for next week? And if so, does that change the approach you have in this game? He says no. This one you approach the same way you would next week in a conference game. We're going to step aside for a moment and listen in for the playing of the Star Spangled Banner. Just about set for puck drop. Time now for your starting netminders presented by Optum X Sports. For the Michigan Wolverines, they go to Aaron Locke for the second straight night. He is 13-5 and 1 in 19 games, a 303 goals against average, and an impeccable 909 save percentage. On the other side of the ice, Sam Zavelson, his first start in quite some time. He is 3-5 with one tie in 11 games played, posting a goals against average of 362. 
and a save percentage of 884. Thank you, Reagan. Starting lineups for both teams. First, the visiting Michigan Wolverines. At defense, they'll turn out to William Rathmanner. Had an assist last night in their 4-2 win, along with Nicholas Welch. At the forward groups, they have Owen DeVries down the middle. The uh, forward had two goals last night in their win, was our first star. He'll be out there along with the likes of Rath Manor, along with, we already mentioned him, Mohammed and Danny Sullivan. For the Chippewas, it's an all-senior starting lineup. At defense, Kyle Robertson, along with Spencer Messina, Austin Ritter up the left wing, Jay Nadu down the right side, and Nathan Bottles in the middle. For game number 14 at home, the 14th final time, we'll square up for Martin Ice Arena. Game number 26 on the season is underway. And Central, first one to it, dumps it deep to the zone, and they go off for a very quick change to get their defunct lineups out there. On comes Connor Beamish, the native of Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. First one touched by Spencer Messina is up out of the zone to the red line, out of the end boards, trying to get to it was Ritter, and he got clobbered over by Danny Sullivan, one of the starting forwards. We get a whistle here. That puck goes up and out of place for CMU will not be able to change to start, but it's it's imperative, Devin, that CMU gets a quick start tonight. Not even, it doesn't even matter if you get on the board early in this game. You just have to be able to put Michigan uh, under duress in the defensive end, something that you were not able to establish last night in that road loss. You gotta do that tonight in order to have a chance. And last night's game started very crazy. We had a bunch of odd man rushes for both sides. Central had about three to start the first 10 minutes and Michigan had a breakaway chance. Stopped first time by Caleb Wollerin. Tonight it's senior Sam Zavelson in net. First time we've seen him in a while. Up to the point, Central trying to get to their first four check of the night. It's Jace Johnson, the youngster, working out of the right wing area. Now Bowerson sends one in, easily wide, trying to deflect it off the end boards. First to it on the other side is Johnson, can't handle the puck, under duress. Kept in, up and now out is Michigan. And that time fluttered around, trying to get to it was Mohammed. And it was blocked away by Messina's body. Now Mohammed will streak this across for Rath Manor, who'll go off for a dump and change. First one going for Michigan, CMU. Has not won a game against this team since 2022. They've lost eight of the last 10 against them. And it certainly has been a tough matchup for CMU the last couple of years. And it, the story of this series for quite some time, Devin, has been close games that are blown open within a couple of minutes span. CMU needs to be able to keep up the pressure tonight. And up on the pressure right now is Michigan. They're rimming this one around the far wall, kept in by Dylan Shelton out of Ohio. Up to the point, one time, Alpern gets it across. Now it's swung for Shelton. A second try, they score! On the putback in front, it's Connor Chi. Had himself an assist last night and points in two straight. The Wolverines are off and running. Yeah, it's a great rebound chance there by G. He steps right into the slot. Zavelson makes the initial save, but there's nothing really Sam can do about this one as it's blown right by his glove and nobody covering the loose puck in the slot and Chi's able to jamming home. Yeah, and Shelton took that initial shot from the point. Reagan had his first goal of the season last night in that 4-2 win, and then you saw Chi down the middle on the putback. Rebound coming from Zavelson, so one nothing. Michigan strikes very early in this one. Simi usually doesn't bode well when they get scored on first. They have to stay to work now as Michigan's right back on the attack. Kept in at the zone, first time by Sam Alpern. Now it's worked across the way for Chi, the most recent goal scorer. Trickles down into Speaks behind the net. Across the way, getting to it is Porzonic. Up, but can't get it out of the zone. Here's Chi again, cruising down to the slot area. Now drops this one off. Speaks trying to get one off, and Nadu's in his face. And now Robertson will trail that one. Hi, Devin. You mentioned the struggles when allowing the first goal in the game. They're 1 at 9 0 oh, 1 when they surrender that first goal. Nathan Bottles now trying to get it in front for Campbell. Only player with two goals yesterday for Central. And that one's seen all the way by Aaron Locke. Making back-to-back -back starts this year. The young sophomore netminder out of Minnesota. 13 wins on the years, played 19 overall. Only four games last year as Anthony Remick was their netminder. And I had a chance to talk to head coach Calum Stripling. At the University of Michigan, they have an interesting study abroad program. As first year juniors, as an undergrad, you can transfer and study abroad for a year 
but that takes away from your playing time. Michigan has a couple players on this roster. That is why Remick is not in net for Michigan this year. I was told by Stripling that they would have him back as soon as next season. So Anthony Remick, the MVP of the national tournament, as we know. Michigan went on to win their first national title. Here's one in front for Nathan Bottles, and it flutters over the left pad. And even without the, uh, the solid performance of Remick in net for this Michigan team, they have still time and time again proven themselves to be a very good hockey team and Aaron Locke has stepped up in between the pipes. They usually get hot late in the year. That was a lot of our conversation yesterday. Here's Michigan back into the zone. Shot turned wide to the left post. Touching first up along the wall is Messina. Tries to get it up, he won't. Now it's fluttered out after the one touch dump in by William Ain, wearing number 26. Here's Kyle Bowerson trying to get to it. He Mishandled the puck as Samuel Horner goes over the line now. Drops the trailer off to the point. There's a shot. Left pad save. It's still up for grabs, and CMU's got it. Bishop gets it out of the zone. Here's Austin Ritter streaking down right wing. That's a good clearance by the CMU defense uh, from, from the slot. It's another rebound given up by Zabelson, but Chippewas are able to clear and get a rush the other way. Michigan on their own rush the other way. It's Devesh KC out of Wald Lake, Michigan. Met first by Brandon Clements. Now it's rimmed around the boards by Ritter. Getting to the puck first on that far wall was Andrew Vise out of California. Now Michigan regains possession after the dump in by CMU to get fresh bodies on the ice. Almost five minutes gone in the 14th and final home game of this 23-24 season. CMU has been better on home ice as of late, winning four straight in Martin. Here's Dylan Shelton. D to D with Sam Alpert. Rims it up that far wall. Met up by Robertson with a good check. Isaac Hopp, the young freshman, tries to move in. Sidesteps one man. Nifty move. He got his pocket picked by Shelton. Now Michigan tries to rim it out. Oh, Robertson couldn't hold the line, but Brandon Clements defended a potential two on one. Yeah, Clements had two options there. Stay back and defend or step up and knock the puck away. He elects the second option there and it works out in his favor. No doubt, Brandon Clements was one of our impact players to watch. We wanted him to be putting out fires last night as that Michigan forecheck is lethal. And you know something interesting, one of our keys last night was you can't allow this team to get on the power play. They're one of the best in the country. Central had a season low, six penalty minutes, Reagan, against this team. It still wasn't enough, but you have to like that improvement. Yeah, the referees were letting them play last night, and CMU was able to bail themselves out of those three power plays that they gave Michigan last night, but they got to maintain that good penalty kill. We saw it uh, be detrimental against Northwood. Uh, Northwood last Saturday ends up costing them with two late power play goals by the Timberwolves. Down early in this one, one nothing after Connor Chee's lone goal. For Chi, a youngster sophomore out of Pennsylvania, had 15 goals on the season last year on Rod to their route to their first national title. Now over the line, quickly moving in is Danny Sullivan. Got met hard by Robertson to push him away from the play. It's Will Rapoon now through center ice. One touch pass up to Porzonic. Got it to his junior winger, Owen Campbell. Now turned over for a moment in Michigan trying to come back the other way. Over the line, too strong for Sullivan. And an icing is called as Bowerson met up with that puck. And I'll tell you what, when Michigan last tried to enter that zone, Robertson disrupted that with a hip check. And th that sort of physicality was something that Michigan took to CMU last night. They were beating CMU to the pucks, and they were uh, out they were outmaneuvering them with the body, taking or making hits. And CMU kind of got ward, worn down as we went on in that first period, and it really started to show in the second. Tonight, CMU has to be able to take that physicality to them. You know, historically too, Central was known as the more physical team, bigger in stature. Michigan's got a lot of guys under 170 pounds. Their average weight on this team, according to Elite Prospects, is 167 pounds. So you look at the size difference, kind of that bodes. Chippewas have a lot of big bodies, especially on that blue line. Nathan Bottles up that far wall, streaks it in. The second group with Schulten on the back door. Schultz trying to jam away on that near side, and Locke saw it the whole way. An interesting decision there by Schultz. He's got the puck at the bottom of the left wing circle there, and he's got Bottles and another Chippewa out in front. He, instead of, like, instead of passing that, he just tries to take that sharp angle shot and go for the rebound. It doesn't work, and Locke is able to cover. Chippewas win the faceoff anyway, though. Here's Connor Morgan fighting for it in that far corner. 
Andrew Spinks is the one on the wall, one on one. Schultz first to it, he's defended well behind the net by Nicholas Welch. And now Michigan has a breakout the other way. Connor Chi drops the trailer, a shot on net and a glove save by Zabelson. That one was his best to start the period and that was moved in by Ola Zhang. Yeah, it's a great drop pass there by Connor Chi to find, uh, to find back checking, uh, to find the trailing forward and it's a great shot and a great save by Zabelson. Number 23 is usually worn by Ayola Zhang. We were informed he might be a scratch tonight, but could be a last minute addition to this lineup. Could be a different player. I'll let you know on the update on that in a moment. Andrew Speaks, though, dumps this puck in. We know that. Brandon Clements up this near wall. Met one on one. Centro trying to win this puck battle over. It's kept into the line by Welch. Sent this one off the bouncing boards. It'll be getting to it first for Aaron Lott, rather Connor Chi, up that far wall, trying to move it into the slot and trickled wide as Brendan Clements came back on the defensive pressure. Now up this near blue line, it's Hurst, setting it on net for Speaks. First time up at the point, Rathmatt are trying to set a shot on net and Bishop blocked it. Here come the Chippewas with numbers the other way. Vasilovich, cross ice feed to Austin Ritter. He got met up and lost the puck. Connor Chi will dump it and go off for his own change. 12.27 to go in this first period. Michigan, the reigning natty champs, are up 1-0 from Connor Chi. Good work in this near side by Connor Beamish. And that's Bradley Schessel wearing number 23 in place of Zhang, who's usually the one wearing that. Schessel out of New York. Has two assists on the year through 12 games. Big collision up that far wall. And Jace Johnson met up with Shelton. There's going to be a penalty coming up. Yeah, it's going to be an elbowing call against the freshman out of Brownsville. Takes a run at a Wolverine in the corner. And with eight minutes gone in the period, bit of an ill advised penalty. Goes in for the check. I thought it might have initially been a charge, but gets the elbow up and. Penalty's called. Yeah, you heard it on that far side. Johnson, the youngster, who's been very reliable for this Chippewa team as of late out of Brownstown. We've said it many times on our broadcast. Leading scorer in all of MHSAA last year in goals. Here's Michigan on their first power play of the night. They can strike in a hurry. Up to the point, cycled for Connor Place. Gets it back down low for Zach Mohammed. Mohammed looks for room to put it on net. Trying to go back door on that far side with Sullivan, and he just missed that left post. Yeah, it's a great defensive play by Beamish right on the back door there, Devin, as this is put up and out of play. But he's able to get his stick in there, disrupt the pass, and the, uh, the Wolverine right on the back door can't get a good handle on it. He lifts it up and over top the goal. Sullivan has five goals this year, a veteran of the East Coast Militia, Triple A. One of the rare youngsters, freshmen on this team. And this Michigan group had a lot of turnover. They had as many as 10 seniors last year on routes of that natty. And their head coach, Stripling, told me that thinks this group is completely different than that one that took home the natty. A lot younger, a little bit inexperienced. Even though a lot of those youngsters, he says, won the natty. So, you get a different look. And Central, good job defending in front of their own bench with almost one minute gone in this power play. 1.15 is the time on the clock. And this Central Michigan penalty kill was really on point last night, Devin, but you could see Michigan later on in the game getting more momentum as they went on, being able to cycle that puck with, with abandon in the CMUN. Chi missed the net up the right wing, kept it at the point by place, banks it off the wall, drops it here for Sullivan who winds up, chest protector save, and the rebound, Chi put it over the top of the crease. And it's Connor Morgan trying to defend against three Wolverines, digging the puck out, Chi does, gets it up to place, one more, D to D again, Sullivan up at the top left wing, sidesteps Morgan, sends it on net, and an easy save for Zabelson who saw it the whole way, Sam Zabelson, out of Merrick, New York. A longtime veteran of the Division II squad. 32 yeah. games in his college career, Reagan. Told me he was a USPHL All-Star for the Springville Pixies back in the day. Very uh, good accolade for him as 
You know, he had a lot of time in the juniors. Good, good, reliable goaltender for Division Two. And came to this D3 squad looking to join a, a winning program. Yeah, and Zabelson, it was in, it, uh, one of the things we were looking at coming into this game, Devin, was how well he, uh, he would do having not played in such a long time. His last start was December 9th against Grand Valley State. It's, or his last appearance was Grand Valley State. He got no decision after coming in relief for Caleb Woolery. His last start was actually December 2nd against Florida Gulf Coast. You know, the one fact, I, I asked a couple of these guys, hey, can you get me a, a fun fact about yourself people wouldn't know? Um, well, he has a 12-year-old pet turtle named Lightning. No relation to the hockey team at all. I like that name, so there you go. Here's Owen Campbell, toe drag, swag, trying to put it home on the near side. Oh my, better save by Locke, but Owen Campbell almost had his third of this weekend. Yeah, and we've talked so much this weekend about Owen DeVries. He denies a Chippewa out in front from getting a stick on that loose puck. He's able to lift the stick of poor Zondik and is able to free the puck from danger there. And as the time expired on the power play, he was shooting that. Here's one wound up from Speaks, and that one might have caught the blocker of Zabelson. Kicked out to the half wall. It's Owen Campo now, trying to find room to work. This Simi forecheck has got to find a way to get going. They've had maybe two pressures the entire period so far. It's been all Michigan leaving off where, picking up where they left off last night. They dominated that second period, four goals. Had as many as a three goal lead in that game. Here's a turnaround by Luke Vasilovic and that one was kicked out by the left pad. Bishop now, hard pressure coming in from Poppy of Oxford. Now he ties it up, Poppy the freshman frees it up for center ice, he'll just flick it ahead. Speaks will get to it first over the blue line. Quick snapshot to get things wide on the movement. McGraw sends it in once again. Vasilovic first there to it. And he'll circle ice. Central trying to get in there. 2 1 2 formation. Trying to back in this one through center ice. It's Bishop under his legs for the dump. Here's McGraw. Gets dogged by Ritter. Bishop tries to finish the check. Some nice works by the freshman Poppy here. Gets over the line again. Back into the zone. Getting hard to the net. Clements puts out that fire as he sticked that puck out of the slot area. Still at it though is Nicholas Welch up that far wall. Takes a check from Josh Gogan, returning to the lineup for a first time in a couple. This one off the pad of Zabelson. That actually went off the side of the net. Fooled about half the crowd on this side of the ice. Michigan with their hounding, resounding pressure right now. The Chippewas can't get this puck out. Now they'll free up some room. Vasilovic back can this up to Ritter. He's met up, pushed to the boards by Poppy. And now we'll get a puck battle tied up at this near wall. 7.35 to go in this first period. Sam Zavelson has come up big once, twice. Even that netting has come up big for them. But Michigan wins that battle over. Up at the point. Shot on Clements. Blocked inside. Getting it back in the far wall is Zhang. Rather. Shessel. And now we'll get a whistle. We got some extras between Vasilovic and Poppy. And Clements is going to go off on a delayed penalty here, Devin. Took a slash to Poppy and he was shaking his hand going into the corner and the result of that is gonna be the second Michigan power play of this evening. Yeah, and not just the power play, it's gonna give them more zone pressure time which they've been cycling the puck extremely well, especially through the left side of the ice. It's been mainly carried up by Sullivan, who had a great backdoor chance in their last power play, couldn't finish on it. So second attempt of the night for Michigan. And first to the puck is Connor Beamish. Great hustle, lost under his skates, however. But he'll go back to kill off some time. Out there on the kill group is the youngster, Lucas Hutton, as the extra defenseman tonight. Central electing to run four forward lines without an extra skater. Sometimes you'll see that with the likes of Bishop or Vasilovich. Tonight it's seven defensemen. So here's Michigan the other way. Mohammed skating wide, well defended by the youngster Hutton. Former captain in Novi. Drops the trailer off for Sam Horner. Looks for room to get it in front. Nowhere to go with it. Good defense by that freshman again, and the puck cleared out. Yeah, Michigan once again trying to find their goal scorer, Connor Chi, in the slot. It's a good, uh, good awareness by the, I believe it was Robertson, to cut that pass off and clear it out. Place moves it ahead, Horner. 
Cross ice feed, dropped the trailer. Mohamed did, left it for Sullivan. Well defended, however. Thinks about getting to the cross. He'll get it along that wall for Mohamed again. Nice work. Once again, what a shift for Lucas Hutton. And it's a stretch play. Connor Morgan all alone to the net, and he missed it wide. Oh, my. Lucas Hutton not only won the battle over at the blue line, he got a great stretch pass. Almost shorthanded was Morgan. Michigan back to work, however, and Morgan. Two young guys, a freshman and a sophomore. Springer two on one with Schultz on the other side. Morgan to the net, score! Morgan, short-handed goal. Evens this thing up at one. Morgan was denied once. He wasn't gonna be denied a second time. This is just a phenomenal shot from the right wing circle. Locke is just ever so slightly off his angle as we get a second look here. He wins the puck battle along the boards, moves up this right wing, and when Locke thinks he's gonna pass it, he just rips it top left corner, and it's 1-1 on another shorthanded goal from this Chippewa team at home. Sophomore scores his ninth goal of the season. Second year player. Had eight on the season last year, so he's up this total. And Morgan, this bright spot kid, his season high was two goals against Adrian earlier this year. First time he scored in a while. Great work, shorthanded. Michigan still with eight seconds on this power play. Up at the point, worked around by Schessel. Now they'll get it across. Sableson over the head of him, and power play is over. Andrew Porzonic, the newly instated captain with the stitch, moves in alone, tries to skate wide, will flutter one on net, well wide. Jay Nadeau in there to reach in after it. Along the outside of the boards, he'll rim the end board wall. Now in front for Nadeau looking for him, and it was well defended out front by Owen DeVries. Haven't said his name yet, two goals last night in Michigan's four to two win. What a massive goal for Connor Morgan to get this thing even up. Reagan mentioned the record for Central when they allow the first goal is one and nine in regulation. That doesn't bode well for a team that on the other side of things has one four straight at home. And as we mentioned in the pregame show, these two teams, not the only time they'll see each other, they'll take on each other in the first round of the MCHC playoffs next week, Reagan. There are two games in which Central Michigan has scored a shorthanded goal. They have won both of them. If we're gonna go further down the breakdown. I love that one. I love that stat. Up this near side, it's gonna be Beamish digging in for the draw with 4.51 to go in the period. Good dump in by Sam Alpern to relieve some pressure. Central, all of a sudden, finding some mojo. We know that first goal for them has been so important. They have struggled mightily to score this year as many as six or seven games. Well, they've had one or fewer. And Jace Johnson turned the puck over on his own right wing. Devesh KC moves in after it. At the defensive position, Alpern winds up and he missed the net. Bowerson now rims that one on the near side. Hop first to it. Met up with Kyle Bowerson, back Kansas went up for him. Springs a breakout to Jace Johnson, too far, but he'll get there with the speed to the net, and he crashes in, and a host of players go barreling over as Johnson and Alpern were battling for inside positioning. You know, each time we've seen Jace Johnson score a goal this season, it has been in a similar fashion to that. He starts on the outside, tries to cut around the outside of the circle, across the front of the goal and stuff it back door. He tries to do it this in this time, but it's a great uh, back check by the Michigan defense to knock him off the puck. And that's really how you're how he's been stopped when he's tried that on multiple occasions. Yeah, that's that's an interesting point to make. Jace Johnson has a very good ability. Hold on, we're gonna stop this thought for a second. The goaltender for Michigan, Aaron Locke, he's... is holding his right pad. Doesn't seem to be hurt at all, but something that Looks like of sorts with his equipment. The I think he might have lost a blade. Netminer, as the backup, is Henry Kolb. I think he lost. I, I think that Locke lost a blade. I have never. <laughs> I've seen that on in a bunch of NHL games, but I've never seen that in an ACHA game. Well, it was a big collision in yeah. front and. My, that time, I mean, Locke was defending that strong side, right? When you're coming down right wing, and he was the one that <laughs> took some of the brunt of that big hit. Yeah, I mean, my guess, my guess is uh, Locke had his at his right skate like forced into the into the post, and that impact jarred the blade loose. 
Wow. So this will cause a bit of a delay here with 4.07 to go. So that minor from Michigan gets worked on in that far wall. We're tied at one after Connor Morgan's most recent shorthanded goal was denied first time on his breakout attempt. That second one, he made no mistake about it. It's ninth of the year. And that penalty kill group for Central got out of harm's way. You thought for a while there, early in the first, Michigan could make this a two, three goal lead, perhaps with how many offensive zone pressures they were having. Yeah, and, but credit to this CMU defense, they've been able to consolidate their losses. They've been playing well in the defensive end, being able to block shots. And unlike last night, Devin, Something that's been key to this first 15 minutes is CMU was getting to the loose pucks. Yesterday, Michigan was out muscling them, out uh, speeding them to those pucks. They were getting to those pucks first, and it allowed Michigan to set up with, with basically no resistance from CMU in the offensive end. So let's go back to what's happening on the ice here, Reagan. We said it a lot. I'll do it again because it's the best way to reference it. You're a former goalie, okay? Former. Still play. Right? No. League. No? Former? No. You hung it up? Retirement, eh? No, no all they do is rough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, regardless, you see what's happening on that far bench. They're trying to work on the, looks like the left skate of Locke. Tell us, you know, could they be switching with their other netminer? Are those blades specially made for goalies? I mean, it is certainly a goalie blade, but, I mean, at this point, it's not, it's, it's a matter of getting the, getting the blade back into the, into the socket in the skate blade. Uh, where it it can take a little bit to get it in. As we see, it looks like Locke is going to stay in this game as a couple of Michigan players are trying to help him get his get, get that blade back in, but it can take some effort. It can take some finagling to get it back in. I was going to say, do you think they'd have just a rusty old hammer laying over there and just <laughs> bang it? Or well, would you that really, hurt him you a really wouldn't <laughs> want to do that. It'd probably, it'd probably break the blade yeah, at that right. point, and you'd, you'd probably have a big divot in it. Joking aside, yeah, it's causing a bit of a... Delay here as we sit at a 1-1 game. Senior night, honored 10 seniors on this Central Michigan squad. The only goal was from a youngster in Connor Morgan, but the player I want to highlight on that Central bench is number five, Andrew Porzondik, out of Macomb, Michigan. As we know, one of the longtime members of this team playing in game 106 today as a Chippewa. It's within top 10 all time on the likes of Christopher Martin. We know as well as Brennan Martin was a long time stay with this team and last year was leading scorer. You know, one of the things he told me on yesterday's bus ride was, I asked him, hey, what's a fun fact about you? Is looks like Locke is gonna get worked over. He's a midget state champion within uh, hockey. So you know, he's had a lot of skill and a lot of good presence there. But I think my better award for him was he had the middle school goofiest shot because the way he explained <laughs> this story to me was he used to only shoot the puck by floating it in the zone, so he'd he'd send like a giant saucer into the air and not even shoot it, and it would just score the dumbest goals, if you would, <laughs> out of midair. That means until some, he developed a real shot. And often, and often will fool the goalies, especially <laughs> if they're not used to it. And as you see, Michigan has taken out Aaron Locke. They're unable to get that skate blade fixed in time, so Henry Kolb comes in. This is only his third game of the season, his fourth of his career. He's carrying a 2.0 goals against average and a 9.33 save percentage this season. That's massive. Michigan last night only ran Locke as their goaltender. Usually teams elect to at least put one backup net miner in there in case anything happens, be it injury or equipment malfunction. Here's a near side chance for Michigan as that was pressured by DeVries. So yeah. now you get this young goaltender in Henry Kiev, only played two games this year. And he has won one of them. And he's won both of them. His last game was back in November. So both these netminders now on the ice haven't played in a long time. Zavelson's had the benefit of the first 16 minutes of this game, but Kolb's coming in clean, or coming in cold, rather. You're right, 2-0 on the year. He had only one game played last year as Anthony Remick was the main starter. He won that game. So, hey, hasn't lost a game technically yet, trying to hold that strong. This young net miner, Henry Cole, having to come in emergency for Aaron Locke. We'll see what happens on his condition if he finds a way to get that blade fixed and back in this hockey game. Meanwhile, we're back underway for the final four minutes. Michigan trying to pressure back into the zone. 
Kyle Robertson is the first one up that wall. Defended with Bishop. Now they'll clear it out over the red line. Puck scored in it on the new netminder Culp. So this one will evade the icing. Here comes Michigan the other way. Owen DeVries trying to move inside. Got poke checked on the play. Return feed by Mohamed was too strong. Now they'll tag up that far wall. Mohamed has it back. Rims this one around the end boards up to the point for McGraw. Psycho's down low once again. They'll go high to low. Defended on this one by Robertson. Helped up by Connor Morgan, the only goal scorer for the Chippewas. Takes the check, and McGraw will send it back in and go off for a change. Rapoon. Forward it to Morgan, under his skates. Trying to set it up for Schultz. A bunch of traffic in his face. Speaks. Gets to it. He's going to get dogged by two Chippewas here. Inside, skirts through the slot area now. Robertson one touches it for himself. Connor Chi meets up with him. Good move against one or two Wolverines. Now he'll send it out to Bottles, gain the red line, dump it in. Will Rathmanner played out of the air. Sent back by Gilgren again. Now this one finds a soft spot for Welch. We'll move it over that Chippewa blue line with speed. Gilgren off the Bench boards will keep it in play. Owen Campbell takes a check from Chi. It's really the first time we've seen Gilgren in the last five games, Devin, as Zabelson makes a good save on a rolling puck that comes in on him. But he's been out of the he's been out of the lineup for the last couple of games. It's your favorite song. I had to. Reagan actually doesn't like this rush song because only. <laughs> Uh, it's the I, only I like the song, song. Most people know. it's just not my favorite because it's the <laughs> only one people know. I stopped going your thought there, but yeah. <laughs> We're having fun. It's senior night, final game of the regular season at home, and the regular season in general for both these teams. Michigan has only lost five games this year. They've all been to MCHC opponents, the likes of Lawrence Tech. Also had a loss in between there from... Notre Dame, but their best win this year was against another, number three, Florida Gulf Coast. So here is Andrew Porzonic out of the line. I should say regulation losses, only five regulation losses this year. As is Brandon Clements, finding this one first at his own blue line. Across the way for Owen Campbell over the red line. Dumps that one in, easily saved by the new goalie, Kolb. That's the first save he's had to make since coming in. Tommy Shea over the line. Has help down the middle. Along with Poppy, tries to swear it up for him. Andrew Porzana, good job getting that out of harm's way. Not off the skate blade, however. Turned over to Shea again. And that's a missed opportunity by Andrew Porzana trying to clear that puck. He turns it right over, and Michigan is able to regain control and get a shot on. 51 seconds left in the period. We're tied at one. Bowerson now off the end boards. Look for Jace Johnson across the way. Sullivan was first to it. Turned over. Beamish winds up. And the first good save of this game for Henry Cole. Never mind. That's Aaron Locke. He's back in. It is. You're right. Looked at the save before I looked at the number. Wait, that yeah. was quick, wasn't it? Yeah. Man, we are looking to our left here as and there were players a couple, were getting there ready. There were a couple of face-offs down in the CMUN. Yeah. I yeah. think he might have slipped in you're right. behind us. Don't catch it all. That's what your job is, right? Catch what I miss. Good catch there. As Henry Kolb comes out, did fine for about oh, three minutes he was in. I don't think he had to make a save. Yeah, well, he had, he had an easy one, trickled in from center ice, but yeah. Aaron Locke is back in, fixed that skate blade after that collision by Sam Alpern and Jace Johnson earlier. As Zabelson's going to hold this one he, get a I whistle. I don't even think he had to make that save from center, Devin. I think that was Locke. We're, look, we're, we're cherry picking for saves. Cherry picking <laughs> for something to talk about him. Hey, two wins on the year, hasn't lost and his college career, how about that? But it's locked back in, the Chippewas are back in their own zone. It's Mohamed, dig in for this draw. Against Beamish. Beamish won it back to Kyle Bowerson, rimmed up this near side wall. Hop is the intended man. 10 seconds to go now, we'll see if CMU tries to find one more offensive breakout. It's Messina moving it. The alternate captain gets trapped out of the far corner, and that's going to do it. So Michigan got things started within the first two minutes from Connor Chi, 
and shorthanded Connor Morgan answers for the Chippewas to nod this game up at one. Intermission report coming up. I will have that one for you to catch you up on our ACHA Top 10 as well as recap some of our Chippewa scoreboards. Don't go anywhere. The final game for CMU of this regular season is live on CCHN.
1-1 is the score after 20 minutes. CMU's Connor Morgan answers for a shorthanded goal after Connor Chi got us started in the first two minutes of this hockey game. That's where we sit. Devin Sarah with you for the first intermission report presented by CMHIceHockey.com, the 14th and final home game for these Chippewas and the 26th and final game of the regular season. They've got a date with Destiny and Michigan next week for the first round of the MCHC tournament. But before that, they have to take care of business tonight. Let's get you recapped with some of our out-of-town scoreboards. For men's Division Two. they picked up their first win of the season, 2-0 over the Northern Michigan Wildcats yesterday. Joel Drucker was the shutout victorious in 2-0 score. They lost this morning 6-2 for the final home game of their year. They'll finish the season out against Eastern Michigan and Concordia University for an outdoor game that will take place at Burr Park on February 25th. You can find those games on Black Dog Hockey with John Gervasi. Women's Division 2 is in action right after this for Adrian at 7.30 scheduled puck drop. I don't think we're going to get there at that time as it's about 6.30 Eastern. We still have 40 minutes of play left for this one. So women's ranked second in the central region right now, trying to hold on and get to the CCWHA tournament unscathed and a potential bid for their second straight Nationals. Meanwhile, Adrian comes in as one of the hottest teams in the league. Ryan Donnelly and Parker Morrison will have the call for you on that one following this game. For our ACHA Top 10 games going on, a lot of shakeup and a lot of important games around the league. Grand Valley State, number one in the country, uh, hosts Ferris State tonight. That's ready for a 7.30 p.m. puck drop. So about an hour after this game concludes, Lawrence Tech, number two in the country, visits Saginaw Valley State for their home game and senior night. Saginaw Valley State, number 15 in the country, lost to Lawrence Tech 2-1 to one last night. If they were to get swept in this next game, and depending on the score, they might just be a bid for losing their Nationals uh, eligibility. Only top 16 go in to St. Louis and with only the first two rounds of the MCHC tournament uh, counting towards the rankings, they need every win they can get. Florida Gulf Coast is number three in the country. They're inactive, but they're coming off wrapping up their season against Miami, Ohio, who they lost to. Uh, they'll be ready to go for nationals in St. Louis soon. Dartmouth is taking on Harvard tonight, number four in the country. Dartmouth, Hope College visits number nine, Michigan State. We had a barn burner, seven to five. Hope came out with the win, but Michigan State looking like they're legit going toe to toe with one of the best in the country as we know. Colby College is inactive tonight but they took on Bates College last night. I believe they had the win in that one. We don't know a score however. Air Force takes on Colorado Mesa tonight. One of the best independent teams in the country, Air Force. Missouri takes on Arkansas. Number 8 against number 10. Last we checked it is 2-0 Missouri with 10 minutes to play in the first period. Mizzou, one of the hottest teams from last season. They went in the Nationals undefeated, but bowed out to Hope College in pool play. They're looking for their second straight bid, the Nationals, before they move up to the Division II ranks in the ACHA. Finally, Michigan State versus Hope, as we mentioned, to wrap up our top ten briefly here on the games slated tonight. Our Chippewa scoreboard looks like this. Men's basketball took on Old Dominion today. What was the final Wow, a nail-biter as Central Michigan struggled to shoot the ball majorly in that first half. I think I read that Adam Jackson said they went 6 for 25 from the floor. That's abysmal, but they escaped escape with a Mac Sunbelt Challenge win. They'll get ready to continue what is hopefully a Mac tournament bid as they sit right now second in the Mac standings. Women's basketball takes on Louisiana. Do we have a score from that one? Wow, buzzer beater by Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns take down CMU, hand them their 16th loss of the year. Women's basketball loses in a nail-biter at the buzzer against Louisiana. That's going to do it for our first intermission report presented by CMHIceHockey.com. Five minutes is the time on the clock before we resume play. The senior night for Central trying to hold on against the number 13 Michigan Wolverines before we get ready to see them in the MCHC tournament. Don't go anywhere. You're watching ACHA Division Three Hockey on CCHN.
Welcome back to Senior Night here from Martin Ice Arena. Devin Serra with you. Reagan Cleves will join me in a second. But tonight is the final home game of the year, and Central has a lot of graduating members of their squad. One of the longtime Division Three members out of Novi, Michigan, is number 71, Jay Nadu, the forward in his college career through 76 games, 20 goals, 20 assists, 40 points. He has been one of the best penalty killers, specifically for his ability. Daughter... Mina is the next. His sister Yashi all in attendance tonight. One thing that was very interesting, I asked him, you know, what was one thing you wanted to highlight about your biggest accolade? He set a record in the high and middle school for the most pick sixes in a middle school football game in Novi with two. I asked him, I said, is that the coolest thing you've done in sports? He said, yes. <laughs> Jay Nadu, though, as we know, one of the most skilled players on the ice for Central over this tenure, and there he is working behind the end boards trying to free this puck up. We are underway for a second period action back in central zone. It's flicked out of the air. We've got a hand pass called. So Kyle Robertson argues his case over there, but if you probably noticed along that far wall next to CMU's bench is a line of players' names. A cool gesture made by uh, the parents of Andrew Porzonik, I believe, Frank and Diane, did a good job coordinating these poster boards with some of the players' former high school, uh, junior travel, uh, Jews jerseys, and a great gesture for a great group of seniors. Many of these guys from Division Two, a couple from the Division Three squad, Porzonik and Nadu, as we just highlighted, Nadu. But tied in a 1-1 game right now. They're taking it to Michigan, who looked like they dominated the early part of that first period, Reagan, but Central turned on the heat later in it. Yeah, and Michigan certainly did own the first five minutes of this hockey game, scoring uh, with cheese goal just a minute and 39 in. But CMU used that power play uh, that they surrendered and scored that shorthanded goal and gained some of that momentum back. Oh, man, that was a big stop by Lucas Hutton in front of the Nets. Michigan was looking to go back door on the near side. And he yeah. sticked that one away. This referee is sick on his finger. What does that too mean? Too many men. Too many men. Wow. So CMU is going to be penalized for too many men on the ice. And another big opportunity for Jason Rupel, the official, made that call. So Central is going to be put in the box. They're going to use Porzondik, I guess, is the man that came on too early. And it's Bowerson with Messina, Morgan, and Schultz for the penalty kill. Michigan 0 for 2 on the night. Allowed a shorthanded goal to Connor Morgan, middle part of that first frame. So now they get to work once again. As in the draw, it's won by Speaks up to the point, but Owen DeVries, who had two last night, is not able to hold the line. Yeah, and there was a, there was a little bit of miscommunication between him and his fellow defenseman. They both thought the other was going for it, and it slipped between them. So here's Rathmanner. One touch pass from Shea. Gains the blue line. He'll be chased in after. Dogged by Messina behind the net. I love help out with Morgan along that far wall. Two Wolverines get to it. That speaks help with DeVries. Yeah, up but not out. If Morgan's able to pull that puck free, he's able to clear it with Schultz. Oh, Michigan with time and space, and Rathman are fan on his one-timer at the bottom of that left circle. Now it's Bowerson in a race for it, shorthanded with Schessel, Bradley Schessel. I keep mixing him up with Zhang. He's wearing Zhang's number, 23 tonight. Here's DeVries, up that far red line against Messina. Messina will get out of harm's way. Good first minute of this penalty kill over for Central. And it's been a lot of racing to the pucks first, putting pressure on Michigan, trying to, even when the Wolverines are trying to get out of their own zone. Uh, here's Chesso over the line. Waits with traffic, tries to put pressure off Horner. Now he'll deliver a pass for place. Winds up for a chance, blocked in front by Robertson. Now he'll reverse field. Try to get it across to Danny Sullivan, and he blew a tire. Place trying to free this puck up. He gets it back up to the point. Mohammed now. Beamish denies him. Up and not out. Place hold the line. Up that far wing. They'll try to center it up in front, and Robertson was first there against Horner. Now they'll tie up with it. 19 seconds left in the power play for Michigan, and this one sailed across the ice. And there's a penalty coming up here against Clements. Well, actually hold it. It's coming up against the Wolverines. 
They're calling a holding on a this hold. one. And it's going to be against Samuel Horner. A guilty party is you called it. It might have been on Clements, but he was one holding thought, the motion. I thought they were going to get Clements for a slash, but it was actually because he was hauled down by a Horner. His stick came up, spun around, and hit Horner. And they got Horner for the hold. And Horner was the only Michigan man that caused a penalty for them last night. Central had only one power play chance. They were 0 for 1 in that. So Horner goes to the box for holding early in this second. Central off the draw. Lost it to Shelton. He'll rim at that end board. McGraw slows the play down. Go forward and ahead for Connor Chi, the only goal scorer for Michigan in this game. Brandon Clements drops it off for Nadu. Moves inside to the net, saved by Locke. Yeah, good confidence saved by that netminder, Nadu. Uh, coming in, coming in with a head of steam, Locke's able to cut down that, cut down that angle, and make the make the save. Robertson took that one angle away, but McGraw was able to push it out to the center zone. Clements will start the play up with Nadu. Dropped under Porzan and Clements tries to move inside. McGraw gets pushed to the boards now. Reverses field up to the point for Campbell. Too strong for him. Robertson is chased in after by Mohammed, so he's going to have to retreat. Central tries to get back to their cycle. And this Michigan four check now in this penalty kill, something we didn't see a ton last night, but when they were on that PK, the four check was strong. They do. Ahead for Porzonic. Check that. That's Campbell. Near corner now. Clements and Campbell try to free up space for Robertson who winds up a shot and it's off the skate of Chi and he's got a potential breakout. One on one against Clements. Puck strong for him. Chi falls to the ice. Clements avoids the call. Freezes one to the center with nobody home. And here comes Jace Johnson the other way now. Central is outnumbering Michigan if they hurry. Johnson skates wide with it around. Around the end boards now. Looks for room to the center. He delivers it off to Morgan, who gets it to Bottles. Looks for room to shoot now. He'll tie it to the end boards for Beamish. Wants room to go in front. He's got Morgan with a lane to shoot. Winds up off the knee of Chi. Up and not out. Central holds the line. 17 seconds to go in the power play. This is a great power play cycle by CMU. Morgan to Messina now. Thinks about it. Takes one and looking for the tip in front is Beamish. It skirts wide. Morgan cycles this back down low. Three seconds till Horner's out of the box. Goes back to Messina up that far point. Now he'll drop it to Bottles. Thinks about for the back door and Johnson, it was too strong for him. And out of the box is Poppy. After replacing Horner, blew a tire, tried to back handle and spin around with that one. With the room to shirt, Zabelson made the first stop. It's up for grabs. And that one's tied up on the near post as the net fell off. That was almost a catastrophic turnover in the defensive end for CMU there, Devin. They, they cough up the puck and getting to it is Tommy Shea right in the left wing circle. His initial shot is saved by Zavelson and somehow neither Wolverine or Chippewa can get to that puck before Zavelson eventually covers it up. Uh, Michigan nearly had a breakout chance for Connor Chi moments before that. Wasn't for Brandon Clements getting back on the play. Could be a different story. And Clements himself will try to rip this up to Austin Ritter, one of the 10 seniors tonight, with Josh Gilgan returning from injury. Reverses field, cross ice, missed Bishop on that one. It's set back by Place, taken out of the air by Vasilovich. He'll push in the play ahead. McGraw is the Wolverine there for it, out of Wellesley, Massachusetts. Now the captain, Tommy Shea, long stretch pass intended for Luke Anderson. Deep to it will get Gilgren now. He's the one transferred from North, Purdue Northwest, has a year still of eligibility in the ACHA. In place, we'll send this one back. Clements rims it around. It's Alpern looking for room to go in front. Michigan deep inside central zone. Shea gets poke checked by Gilgren. Ritter does a good job sealing off the wall. That allows him to go off for a change as the dump in by Shelton regains possession for CMU. Vasilovich turns around. Gilgren, host of pressure from Horner straight off the bench. But look out, Horner's got to avoid another holding penalty there. Shelton now tries to go D to D to Alpern and he mishandled that out of the air. Gilgren missed on the dump in. Michigan has the room the other way to shoot it wide off the left post. Trying to get back in front of that puck was Vasee. 
That's a dangerous play by Gilgren. He elects to swat at that puck at the blue line, fans on it, and his momentum carries him past the puck, and Michigan's right in with a great A scoring chance. Shelton with Beamish coming in his blue paint area. Has to go back. Beamish, this Michigan forecheck, a lot more aggressive in this second. Kind of like they were last night when they scored four goals. The only of that game for them, it was enough to win four to two. And a lot of that in, was due in part to getting bodies in front of the net. Two of those goals came off deflections from Owen DeVries, but those other two shots came from the point. It was through traffic. Woolery couldn't see him until they were behind him. This so, CMU's been doing a really good job of clearing the front of the net tonight, and that's limited those Michigan chances. Shessel for Michigan gets this deep inside the paint. Trapezoid area, two Chippewas are there. First one is Robertson. Now Porzonic to help him. Rapoon versus Field. They try to center this up for Zabelson off his paddle. And Johnson springs a three on two for CMU with Porzonic. Jace hard to the net, puts it inside and never got a shot off as I think Locke paddled that one. A shot from the point by Rapoon missed wide. Porzonic cycles it up for Robertson who takes one on net and Campbell's tip was too far. That's a good chance there by Jace Johnson like the idea of trying to go back door to Porzonic, but he's tied up by Welsh on the back door. Can't get a stick on it. Johnson was trying to work this puck over on the rush, and that one was felt by a Wolverine there. And Shessel, he speaks now. Tries to find room to work. He'll push it up for the point. Place, puts his place in, but it's not strong enough. As Johnson now puts reverse field for a three on two again. Across to Porzonic, back to Johnson. Couldn't handle it. And Shessel clears it out of harm's way. And it's another a frustrated Owen Campbell goes off. And it's another good look for that group. They can't convert. Place now gets poke checked by Robertson as Messina tries to be the first man to it. Called Shessel's name a lot. He's been out there for a ton of time. Morgan works over McGraw. He'll go off for a wholesale change. Intercepting that stretch was Sullivan. He's got pressure coming to him. Up that left wing is Alpert. He'll try to move it ahead. Sealing off the pinch angle. DeVries takes Robertson down to the ice. Bottles the speedster. One of the 10 seniors out of Williamston. Stretches it ahead for Morgan. Gained the glass, bouncing it off. Bottles, lost handle of that one. Into the arms of DeVries. He'll spring it up left wing for Mohammed. He's got Sullivan across the way with him. Well defended by Bowerson. This one bounces the glass. Trying to get it in front is DeVries. Can't find room to work now. He'll go across from Mohammed. Tries to center it up for Sullivan. And blocking that off the body was Messina. Another shot rimmed around. And the turnaround by DeVries didn't go. This has been a back and forth last couple of minutes. And both teams getting some good looks, but a great play there by Messina in front of the net to knock that pass away. No kidding, this Michigan forecheck has been all over CMU, but they haven't gotten too many clean shots off. Bottles now regains their forecheck. Try to get it across the Schultz, and that causes a turnover. Tommy Shea, Michigan's captain now. Back the other way with numbers, three on two. Tries to go across, great defensive stand by Bowerson, but room to shoot, Zabelson off his shoulder on the turnaround, and that one's up out of play. And we finally get a breather. Both these teams back and forth, rush after rush after rush, and both netmiters and the D standing tall, and credit to Sam Zavelson. A lot of that pressure has been from Michigan in the CMU end. They've gotten a lot, a lot better of the looks, and Zavelson's been playing well, making a couple of key saves. He's been very good, and we haven't seen him play since that Grand Valley State Series. This is his first game of the second semester. Here's Jake Bishop, up left wing now. Tries to gain entry to the zone. Good move They're going around Rath Manor. In the slot area though, first to it was Poppy. The freshman, one on four, tries to move in. Drops the trailer, is keeping it inside was Anderson. Finds room to shoot, off the skate of Clements. Gilgren reverses that field, it's stopped in front. It's loose up for grabs, and that one was Skated away by Zabelson, kicked his leg out, and we've got some extra. Are they sending off a Chippewa? They're going to send Gilgren off, but I think they're also going to send a Wolverine off too. It was Gilgren giving the retaliatory slashes 
to Gavin Poppy, who himself took down Brandon Clements in front. So both of them are going to go no off. worse for wear. For two minutes here. First time we've seen open ice for either of these teams in this series. Central had a lot of it against the likes of Oakland and Northwood. Four on four, we're talking. So they'll get time to do this. 8.51 to go in the second period. Devin Sarah right and Cleese with you for senior night. One of those 10 seniors, Andrew Porzondik, involved in the play. Adam McComb. He said getting captain was, quote, pretty cool. But as we know, Christopher Martin is the de facto captain for that. And Reagan, give us an update on this. They have four minutes on the board so for Gilgren and only two for Poppy. So they're going to give Poppy, I believe, a rough. And a and then Gilgren's going to get both a cross check and a slash for his for uh, the play after the whistle. At least that was what they had up on the board. Now it's been taken down. And it's at zero. So while we wait for this penalty call to be put in, I'd like to remind you that Club Hockey Network, CME Club Hockey Network is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full game broadcast for men's D3 hockey, as well as women's D2 is getting ready for a double header. Parker Morrison's to my right, getting ready. Looking dapper as always, along with Brody. So the way it's going to shake out is Gilgren's going to get a double minor, but it's going to uh, it's going to be halved by that poppy penalty. So Gilgren's going to serve two minutes. Michigan goes on the power play here. Okay, so two-minute power play. The Wolverines are 0 for 2 previously, allowing a shorthanded goal to Connor Morgan. 0 for 3. Thank you. So this one, up this near wall. Tommy Shea tries to cycle it for Speaks. Michigan had a tough time getting a clean shot off. Will they do it on this power play? Back up to the point. They'll take their time with it. Chessel tries to move this puck for Shea. Doesn't like his look. Goes across to Rathmanner. Central trying to play the man defense best they can. Now they close the box. It's Shea to the net. That one turned wide, and no one was ready to close off the wall. So back to get it is place. That's a great pass across. Chessel wide open on the back door. Cannot get a stick on it. And we saw Michigan do that multiple times last night. The back door was uncovered countless times by CMU. And Michigan was just unable to capitalize on those backdoor feeds. DeVries up to Rathbanner at the point. They're waiting for the right look. Here's one by DeVries. And that one caught a piece of Zabelson. Kicked out to the half wall. And they can't hold the line. Central will send it down length of the ice with 52 to go in the man advantage. Yeah, Zabelson keeping his stick strong to the ice right there. And he's able to deflect that. It's a good, good hard shot from the left circle. Speaks up to Mohammed, who gains right wing. He'll center it up for Chi, looking to go to him. This one is played out as Robertson hem Chi off that wall. This is a great penalty kill right now by CMU. They got to kill it off still for another 20 seconds. And they'll send it out. Connor Place can't hold the line. It's Brendan Schultz. First to that puck. He's got Connor Morgan down the middle. This group had not one but two great shorthanded looks, and they get out of traffic. But what a kill this is for CMU. They're going to send Michigan 0 for 4 on their power plays tonight. Here's Connor Morgan to the net, roofed it over that near corner, looking for double shorthanded goals, and we got a stoppage. Schultz is going to go off for a hook. So CMU, after killing off a penalty, getting another shorthanded chance. He's going to go back to the PK here. Not what you want to see. They had to kill off double penalties midway through that first period. That second power play Michigan had in the first was what led to Morgan's first goal of the night. So doesn't bode well, though, for CMU that has done a good job in this series not taking penalties up until now. And they've got five in this game. 0 for 4 is Michigan on the power play. Two minutes. Brendan Schultz, one of those 10 seniors, will sit off the draw. Michigan will gain possession up at their own line. Going D to D across. His Shesso in front. It's up for grabs still, and Beamish now one times this around the boards. Tommy Shea, however, seals off that wall again. Andrew Speaks. 
Too strong for Rathman, and they have to retreat. You know, CMU's aggressiveness on the penalty kill has worked for them in this game, but they have to they have to keep some distance. They can't get too aggressive because it, it can burn them really quickly with a good team and a good power play like this Michigan Wolverines. Quick passes, speaks, takes one from Rathman, are looking to go across. DeVries was the man streaking in. Second time, he's missed a back door open. Now they're back to it again, and Tommy Shea missed the net again. I think he rang it off the crossbar, and it's again another backdoor feed that can't connect for the Michigan Wolverines. And as much as they've tried that this weekend at Devon, at some point, you gotta think the more opportunities you give them, they're gonna connect. Not without Jay Nadu, and he gets hauled down by William Rathmatter. Chippewa bench and fans are livid. They want a call, it's not coming. Connor Chi moves in for a shot. Nice save by Zavelson. Hemmed out by Sullivan now. He takes a check from Messina, and Nadu clears it the length of the ice, 35 to go, and Michigan's fifth power play of the night. The only reason I can think, Devin, they let that play go is that possibly the Wolverine was playing the puck, but at the end, he took down Jay Nadu, and it's gonna leave a bad taste in the Chippewa's mouth. Never mind now, Sam Horner gains the blue line, drops it for Sullivan, up to the point, quick passes. They look for room to shoot, one time by Chi, and he missed the left post. And he's down on the ice, hurt. Porzonic took him down. They'll try to go back to Mohammed, And that pass was too strong. Through the center ice, Clements gets out of the zone. Two seconds, and they will keep the penalty kill on. 0 for 5, go the Wolverines. Porzonic back to Clements, and front score! What a pass by Porzonic! And the patience by Clements puts the Chippewas in the lead. This has been a phenomenal last six minutes for this Chippewa team. Not only have they killed off two power plays in impeccable fashion, they also created the turnover here. Andrew Porzonic working down the left side, feeding it back out in front to a wide open. Clements, who goes falling to the ice, gets up elated as this place jumped under five to go in period two. CMU has their first lead of the series, Devin. This packed barn on senior night, and that was a senior forwarding it to a sophomore. Brandon Clements with his first goal of the season. Puts the Chippewas in the lead after killing off two massive penalties. They're feeling it right now in front of this packed barn. The Marty, final time will do it from this place this season. And it's Luke Anderson trying to answer for the Wolverines. How do they respond? Head coach Callum Stripling told me this is a young group, a very much different team than the one that won a national championship. He's worried about matching the physicality. They're trying to get back to work after missing two opportunities, Shelton from the point, and Zabelson got the blocker on it. The best KC out of that far corner. Beamish rims the wall. Laying with it is Shelton, but he can't touch it. It's too far for him. Alper now, gloved by Bowerson. Played with the hand, had to give it to someone else. Chase Johnson, the youngie speedster, gets his pocket picked by Shea. Reversing field is Alper, trying to regain the line. He'll skate wide, puts one on net. Well wide, but Zabelson elected to put it out of harm's way anyway. Bowerson up that glass, played by Vasilovic, and up to Bishop, who has room to work. He's got Austin Ritter down center ice. Lead pass for him too far. Central gets time to change. Ritter centering feed, nobody home. Vasilovic drops it off. Fourth line out there for CMU. I like the look there from McCroon trying to shoot that through a bunch of traffic in front. It takes a hop wide. Here's Robertson up at the point. Blinds one on net and lock. I think saw that. Rapoon now puts it on the trailer there for Vasilovic. Up to Bishop, thinks about it, looking for a tip, and that one's well blocked by the Wolverines. We'll have it into Vries. Get it out right wing for Shea. Fan on the pass attempt, had Bishop all over him. And now, the lead pass intercepted. Here's Tommy Shea to the slot area. Big hit laid by Robertson. Turns that puck out to the end boards. Welch lays at the wall, keeps it in. A pwn to chase it with Mohammed. Finds room to work, centered it up for Shea, and that pass too strong. And again, 
Michigan has missed as many as five opportunities I've counted in the last 10 minutes. That's a lucky bounce for CMU. Goes off the skate of Welsh and deflects back out to neutral ice. Connor Chi now leaves it there for Speaks out of Bloomfield Hills. Nice nifty move, but it was better played by Robertson out of that corner. He gets hauled down. Stick out of the air of a Wolverine. That was Chessel and the Chippewas have a three on two the other way. Connor Morgan lays it there for turnaround. Vasilovich to the net and Locke had to be savvy with the paddle. Yeah, it's, a, it's a shot that takes a deflection out in front of Locke. He has to make the quick reaction save and does so very well. Connor plays, tries to move inside. Rapun won't let him do it. Turnaround attempt by Chessel never gets there. Minute and 30 to go in this second period. The Sparks have flown. It's the Chippewas that have answered from Brandon Clements first of the year. And you can After see killing off back to back penalties. And you can see the physicality ramping up, Devin. Ever since those two penalty kills by CMU, Michigan, both teams going back and forth as the tension builds in this building. So that's behind the defense. Nathan Bottles, nifty move. Better save by Locke. Trying to dangle his way inside that far post. And Locke is able to get his glove on it. 1.10 to go in the period. Michigan has numbers themselves now, but we got something coming up. It's a penalty on Michigan. And I believe their coach has just been thrown out of the game. Oh my. That's assistant not... coach Alex Truba over there. Head coach Callen Stripling. They only sent two coaches for the Wolverines. And yeah, Truba is gone. So that's a bench minor wow. penalty for the Wolverines. Because you saw you saw the, the official kind of just stop play. And serving it is going to be their extra skater, Bradley Schessel. That is a rare find. You don't see that every day. A coach getting thrown out. So that leaves Caleb Stripling, the reigning MCHC and ACHA head coach of the year, to man this team alone. Officials trying to get control of this game. You talked about this one ramping up physically as CMU wants this one bad. Off the draw, Nady wanted to Porzonic to start the power play. And they didn't they didn't have the scoreboard correctly configured. They didn't have the time up, so they're gonna blow the play dead here and allow the team to reset, get the penalty up on the board. CMU is 0 for 1 tonight on their only power play. Sam Horner for a hold early in this period. You got another crack at it here. Nadu won the draw again. Great job there. Poor Zondick got it across to sophomore or junior, rather Campbell. At the point. One time at Robertson, he fanned on it. Still loose in the slot area. Trying to get to it first was Shea. Wants a call. Argues a trip on Campbell. He's not going to get it. Two on two. They'll fight up that far corner, and Michigan's out. And Shea takes a spear on Campbell, and, and he's hurt. They're going to send both of them here. Campbell held him along the boards, and Shea and Campbell, I believe, are going to go both off here. But Campbell got a spear up in his rib cage from Shea. That's a tough one to take there. As Campbell's still down on the ice. We're going to hold it here for a moment as the junior plays in front of his own bench. Helped by Vasilovich. 45 seconds to go in the period. There's a conversation being had with both assistant captains, Owen DeVries for Michigan, Spencer Messina. 45 seconds to go in this second period. We've seen tempers flare in the last 10 minutes of this game, Devin, and the referees desperately trying to gain control over this game. We've seen hits and spears. We'll see, we'll see what the call is here as Brennan Martin is having a heated discussion with one of the officials. And it looks like it's going to be a five-minute major. Wow. So Shea is going to get a five-minute major. Not sure if it's going to carry anything with it. Good to see Owen Campbell get up. He's going to go to the penalty box because of that penalty. So lots of things to sort out here. You're going to have a lot to recap in this one. What a wild period it was. The only goal is from Brandon Clements. Central. Killed off two crucial penalties. I think they're going to send Shea off here. So Shea appears to be done in this one. He is headed for the locker room. Being helped off by Jason Ruppel, the referee. And so Shea will go. 
Schessel is still in the box, serving that bench minor on assistant coach for Michigan, Alex Truba. And that's a big blow for Michigan. Their captain, head coach Caleb Stripling, told me in pregame that Shea is expected to be their goal scorer, the one that starts their four check breakouts when they need one, and they need one right now. So they're down one in this game. Good to see Campbell get to his feet. He's sitting on the bench now. Looks like he got the wind knocked out of him. So 45 seconds left. Reagan, I count two Wolverines on the ice. I count three. Yeah, it should, it'll be a four on three here for CMU with Campbell in the box for two minutes. And the bench minor for Michigan still being served for 137. So it will be a continued power play for CMU. And if you're a Michigan fan, you're going to be you're going to be a, a little bit relieved that that five-minute major comes with a CMU penalty. And if you're so a Chippewa, it's a bit this, unfortunate. Well, it opens things up, and it's still a power play with 137 left. And off the draw, speeding in is Will Rathmanner. He's got all alone score. Will Rothmanner of Minnesota, right off that draw, skates in alone and answers shorthanded. We're tied with 39 in the period left. Yeah, it's just a clean faceoff win by Michigan shorthanded. Is this faceoff was at neutral ice and he just works down the right side and beats Zabelson clear over the blocker. It's another, it's a shot hole one back just like Locke wanted that shot back when Morgan tied the game halfway through that first. That's Rothmanner's first goal of the season. Answers for Michigan. Wow, two short-handed goals for each team. Robertson winds up trying to answer, and he missed the net. Now he'll skate behind the end boards. 20 seconds left to go in the period. Has room to work. If he wants to take it, now he'll turn that one wide to the left post. Kept in by Morgan off the wall. He's got options. Nathan Bottles, nine seconds left in the second. Thinks about it, takes it on net, and he put it high. Three seconds, one more attempt from Morgan, and a blocker saved by Locke sends it away. With 39 seconds in the period, Will Rathmanner answers for the Wolverines. This one has gotten physical. It has saw Michigan with a host of power plays. They end up not scoring on any of them, but they answer with 39 to go from Rathmanner. We got a good one, folks. Final 20 is coming up. Reagan Cleese will have the second intermission report for you to get you some out of towns for our professional scoreboard. Stay with us. The final game of the regular season between CMU and Michigan coming down to the wire on CCHN.
Welcome back inside the broadcast booth for the second intermission report. Central Michigan and the Michigan Wolverines deadlocked at two at the end of 40 minutes, and boy, was that second period entertaining. Both teams entered into this period with one goal, and it was Brandon Clements at 15-16 to put CMU up by one. That lead, though, would not last for much longer. Rath Manor, a shorthanded tally after a slew of penalties, put Michigan back even with just 39 seconds remaining in the period, and that's where we stand right now. And as, as I mentioned, this period and this game has gotten a lot more physical, a lot more aggressive from both teams, and it spilled over in the form of a couple of penalties late. Uh, first of all, Michigan got a bench minor penalty for, uh, from the coach for uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, putting Central Michigan on the power play at 1852. Then a little bit later on, uh, Tommy Shea would uh, spear Owen Campbell, receive a five minute major and a game misconduct, but Campbell in retaliation gave a cross check to Shea, so he also went off. So that put us on a, on a four on three with time still remaining on that unsportsmanlike. It was then that Rathman would score that shorthanded tally to tie up the game heading into period number three. So it's been a lot of back and forth in this game, lots of aggression and lots of tension in this building. Both teams fighting for uh, for uh, bragging rights in this series, but this isn't the most important game of this series. Next weekend, these two teams will play yet again in the MCHC first round, the fourth and fifth seeds respectively, and that will be the win or go home game. And so we, but we still have 20 minutes to go. CMU looking for their first regulation win over Michigan in over 10 games. Their only win in the last 10 has come on the road in that uh, overtime win with Brennan Martin two seasons ago. CMU trying to pull the rabbit out of the hat yet again, trying to beat a high-ranked opponent. They beat Oakland 2-1 uh, two week, uh, about three weeks ago. They were the number 12-ranked team in the nation. They're trying to do it again to the number 13-ranked Michigan Wolverines. Will they do it? We'll see coming up in the third period. Before we get to that, take a look, taking a look at the out-of-town scoreboard, the Grand Rapids Griffins just got underway against the Manitoba Moose uh, from Van Andel Arena. They are scoreless early in the first period. Bob Kayser and Larry Figurski have the call for you on Wood Radio 1300, 106.9 FM. You can watch on AHL TV. The Saginaw Spirit are taking on Sean Bednar, former uh, broadcaster here at uh, it's here at CMU for the D3 hockey team. His, uh, his Erie Otters tonight at 7.05. Dylan Clark has the call for the Saginaw, uh, for the Saginaw side, and Sean Bednard has the call. Uh, you can watch all the games on chl.ca, uh, uh, the website there, and uh, you can listen to Sean Bednard call that one. Uh, you can toggle between uh, the broadcast. Uh, you do have that option on the streaming service. The Red Wings earlier today, dramatic comeback fashion, a 4-3 overtime win, uh, getting uh, the sh uh, penalty shot in overtime, are able to knock off the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, that was a great game for the Wings, a fun one in comeback fashion. Well, they're just getting the nets down on the ice below us. We'll step, we'll step aside and come back for the third period. Stay with us. It's sure to be a fun one here on CCHN.
inside Martin Ice Arena for the final home game of the year. We've got a good one. Deadlock at two. After two periods, Michigan and Central. Chippewas looking for their first win in three over the Wolverines. And Michigan for them, ranked 13 in the country. It means everything for them to hold on against unranked CMU. Senior night, the emotional favorites, a packed barn. We're underway for the final 20. Devin Sarah with Reagan Cleaves on this one. Michigan scored in the final 40 seconds of the period, shorthanded from William Rathmanner's first of the year. The defenseman has had seven assists coming into this contest, but could not. It was a wraparound try by Porzonik. Was stopped by Locke. It's a great right back to work on the power play. The Chippewas are. Nathan Bottles to the slot. Winds up with a shot and block in front. That's a great save by Locke on the wraparound by Porzonik, able to get his left pad to the post in time. Didn't finish by points. The Chippewas trying to finish this on the power play. We're back to five on five now. As four on three, four on four, excuse me. Robertson over to Bottles. In front, trying to get it home was Porzonik and it skirted through him. The stretch pass up the way to Rath Manor. Connects to the net, short side off the blocker. What a first minute of this period. Back and forth, both teams with a number of chances. Michigan holds a line from Speaks. Mohamed tries to sidestep Robertson, and he did a great job poke checking that out of harm's way. The four on four is because of Owen Campbell and Tommy Shea getting into it. At the end of that period, Tommy Shea got sent off with a five minute and a game for roughing and spearing Owen Campbell. Here's Connor Morgan now, up at the point. Reverses field with Jace Johnson. He's got it, thinks about the shot. Lock on a piece, it's still up for grounds on that short side. And Porzonic rather can't no jam, jam, can't jam it home. Mohammed is out, 2.26 to go in that four on four. Rather back to five on four, power play. Numbers shifted around. Point is, Central's got a man advantage. Yeah, I don't blame you, Devin. It was a hectic end of that second period. But Still about two and 11 left on that Tommy Shea. Five minutes. Five major. minute major. Yeah. And it's an all you can eat, so if CMU can score once, they can, they'll can keep the power play. Not for mine, we've had so many chances from both sides. Campbell, too far for Johnson. And now he'll tie up with that half wall. Stops, lays it across. Pushed ahead for Messina now. Pushes his man to the boards. Good play by Gavin Poppy. Springs a breakout for Michigan, but Dylan Shelton will just evade pressure. And we get a whistle and a penalty. This is gonna come against CMU. And we're gonna go four on four. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my gosh. Well the officials early in this game were letting them play Reagan. Michigan had as many as three power plays. A bench minor for CMU in between there. They killed all of them. And it, heck, it was even Connor Morgan scoring shorthanded halfway through it. But in the second period it got a lot more chippy and the referees just tried to get a hold of this game. They have now, but there's a penalty on CMU's Messina. He's going to sit. Michigan is 0 for 5 tonight on man advantages. Chippewas are 0 for 3. So here we go. We'll get 4 on 4 for the next roughly 4 on. It was a 5 on 4 for Mich for Central. Most recently, after Messina's, for Messina's penalty. And then Michigan is able to draw one on Messina, so they're getting things squared away. What's going on on this far, this far now side? Now the referee has been telling somebody behind the net to go and leave, leave from behind the net, who's I think been tapping on the glass with a puck. And they told him to leave, and then the referee then uh, turned around, the guy did it again, and so they are gonna hold the game until he leaves. Holy cow, and they're sending a Chippewa <laughs> scratch tonight. I think that's Chris Armitrout yeah, across Armitrout. to go talk to that fan behind the glass. We know it's pretty typical for fans of really any hockey team to bang glass behind the opposing goaltender, make life a little bit tougher for him. And so if CMU wants to avoid a penalty, they're gonna have to get this fan out of here. So Chris Armantrout, one of the scratches tonight, along with Chris Martin, will try to escort that fan behind. So we, that's what the delay is for. The penalty coming up is on Spencer Messina. We'll have about a minute and 20 of 
four on four it, before Michigan it'll gets. It'll be a minute. It'll be a minute and forty. Well, there's one forty-one left in that five-minute major on Tommy Shea. It's going to be interference on Messina. Yeah. So to clarify things, now they've sent this official across. I think they want to find out which fan exactly it was that was tapping that puck on the glass. <laughs> There's a fan to our right in a red sweater, vested, pleading his case. Reagan, I've done a lot of games for CME with you. I don't think I've ever seen quite the kind of delays we've seen. First no. it was the goaltender Aaron Locke losing his skate blade on a big collision in the first. Then you saw Owen Campbell get speared, a man disqualified. Now you get an official sending a fan out of the ring. I think I know who that fan is, but I'm not gonna, not gonna disclose their identity just yet. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> say who it is at all. But that is a tough, tough way to go. You gotta, and you gotta so, wonder if he's gonna come back and try to sneak back in. Hopefully he doesn't. Well, they do lock that door behind the red door, Martin Ice Arena. So, four on four for the next couple of minutes. And by the way, I jokingly mean reveal their identity because. I think I know who it is. But regardless, <laughs> we're back to play here. 17-12 to go in this third period. We're tied at two. A host of penalties on both these teams. Hope you keep track of them at home. Neither, neither side has capitalized anyway. Here's Owen oh, Campbell moving in, toe drag, and he missed the right post. It's, Cycles up with Nadeau up that far wall, Reagan. Yeah, you talk about teams not converting. It's been the teams who have been shorthanded who have gotten, the, who've gotten both special teams goals tonight. Speaks gets the stick taken out of his glove by Nadu. Roughed over by Campbell. He'll go off the bench, leave his stick there. Porzonic puts one on net wide. Campbell now to retrieve this one. Robertson couldn't handle the soft pass. And now he'll get rimmed by Sullivan for it. Gains the blue line back for redemption. Puts one on lock with a chest protector save. Yeah, I like the idea from Robertson going for that rebound shot, but nobody's home. He's the only one in on that rush for CMU, and nobody's in the slot to jam home what would have been a wide open rebound. Place up ahead with Nadu now. Back to the own zone goes Michigan. Rath Manor pursued by Clements. He'll lead this bank pass off the boards intended for Mohammed, but it missed him. Josh Gilgan with the first man there. The transfer of Purdue Northwest, Division One. Taken out of the slot was Welch out of center ice. All this open room, it's like an Olympic sheet. Here's Mohammed to the net and Zabelson will swallow it with five seconds until the five minute major on Shea is over. It'll give 21 seconds of power play time for Michigan. And so Clements goes down and Muhammad's gonna go off for the penalty oh here. My. Forget about that. And the call is a high stick on Mohammed. So after all of that, a penalty on Messina. We're back to four on three. And the penalty on Shea will expire in five seconds. So then you're gonna have finally some five on four time after 21 seconds. His central four on three for the next little bit. And here's Robertson up in the slot, takes the shot, turns it wide. Banked off the inboard glass. And now Nadu for bottles now. Four on four for only 10 seconds. Backhanded that far wall, did Beamish. Frees up space for bottles. Across the trailer for Robertson. Out of the box comes Messina. We're five on four now. Owen DeVries, great job pitching off the angle to take that puck out of the trapezoid. As Central was trying to get to work on their forecheck. 1.23 to go in their power play. 15.08. Reagan, how many chances have they had tonight? Yeah, for CMU, they are 0 for 3 tonight. That's 11 penalties nearly in this game. 0 for 3 CMU. Somebody's got to do something. Michigan, Andrew Speaks gets out of harm's way as Messina. And Johnson trying to direct traffic and get this puck settled down. One minute left in their man advantage. 
Johnson can't handle the lead pass. It's taken out by Place. He gets it back. Hard to the net. Johnson as Locke stayed with him the whole way. Johnson's lucky that that puck didn't go in, and I'll tell you why. If he does put that in, he kicks at it. And if it goes in, that would have been disallowed. Great point. Andrew Porzonic across the Navy away. They'll regain possession. Johnson, the youngster with two goals, puts one on. And Locke is going to smother this one easily. 32 seconds left in their power play. 14-21 left in this third. Wow, what a five last five minutes it's been the to last, start things. The last five minutes of that second period and the first ten the first five minutes of this one have been crazy. Penalties on either side, majors and uh, lots of power play time for CMU specifically. But yet they haven't been able to find the back of the net. They've they've got momentum just like they had momentum at the beginning of that. Uh, or coming off of that shorthanded goal they had from Morgan to tie up the game at one, but they haven't been able to capitalize. Michigan gets a breakout the other way. It's Dinesh KC. He gets pounded over by Robertson at that near wall. And Reagan, what's so interesting is even though it feels like that first goal by either side to break the tie would give the team the edge, both teams have answered each other quickly. Remember, it was Connor Morgan answering shorthanded after Michigan opened the scoring. And then Michigan scored a minute after the second goal and Robertson into the glove of Locke. And they'll whistle it. So, five on five, neither side capitalizes. Central, 0 for four on their power plays tonight. Michigan, 0 for five. Wow, what a sequence of events. It's like neither side can get back to the five on five. Now we are though. Johnson takes one, put it wide to the right corner. Sticked out of the air by Sullivan. Wrath matter to push the play ahead. He'll just give this one up to Robertson to live a fight another day. Messina, the alternate captain, moves over left wing. Replaced out of that area by Shelton. Wrath matter, good movement of that puck to. Spring a breakout from Michigan the other way. Up and down the ice we go for both sides. Connor Beamish pokes, checks his man, Mohamed. Got it across for Hop, but Mohamed's still behind the play. CB hurries, and that one's too far for Hop, as he could have had a two on one spring with Rathmaner. CMU trying to defend against Sullivan, puts one on Zabelson. Easy paddle save. And Sullivan tries again, and that one is blocked in front off of the stick of Messina, up and out. A flurry of chances. CMU has had the majority of the chances. In, to start this third period, Devin, but Michigan slowly trying to get back, uh, trying to get the momentum back on their side, which is something that they didn't have any trouble doing on, er, on in last night's game, but tonight CMU's shown up. Yeah, this game feels eerily similar to the one they won against Notre Dame way back early in 2023 of this year. This one's tipped in front and Zabelson oh, oh. had to be ready as Speaks was closing in on him quickly. That is one heck of a save. Devin. That was his best. It I mean, was that a was more in dangerous front than it looked. A man right out in front, and we'll see if we can get a second wow. look at it here. But it's it was it was a deflection two feet out in front of Zabels, and he had to close his right arm on it. We run on top of it. Dan a save. Draw one by Speaks for Michigan. He drops that one in front of the slot area for McGraw. Pushes the play to the deep zone, however. Central wins that puck battle over. How good has Brandon Clements been tonight for CMU one-on-one? -on -one? Connor Place, the first U of M man to it. And the maze in blue. I desperately to win this puck over from Connor Morgan. Can't do it. Schultz with bottles. Takes the shot. Scores! <laughs> Brendan Schultz, how do you do? On senior night, gives the Chippewas the lead. 3-2. This is a great play by Brendan Schultz. Takes the pass along the blue line. He works right in on goal and fires it home. And it's, an, it's another shot. He's got traffic out in front of Locke. It's a great shot through traffic that Locke really doesn't see into the last second. 
We've seen so many of those goals this weekend, Devin, and the trend continues. Schultz with a goal at 7.47 to put CMU up 3-2. Brendan Schultz of Grand Rapids, Michigan, his sixth goal of the season and his 58th game in his ACHA career. Spent over half of that with Division II and 33 games. The son of Linda and Eric tonight, one of the 10 seniors honored, gives the Chippewas the lead with still over half of this period left in this game, trying to knock off the number 13 team of the nation. Penalty coming up against CMU. Officials are gonna indicate a hold, and off will go Kyle Robertson. Oh my, that's a backbreaker. Talked about Michigan being able to answer it quickly. After Tommy Shea took that five minute major late in the second, it was William Rathmanner with his first of the year to answer. Most recently here, Brendan Schultz in the second line for CMU punches in. You've got to be good once again. They've kept Michigan off the power play all this weekend and a group that was highly touted as one of the best in the nation on the man advantage has struggled to put and find pay dirt. So off the draw to dig in for it. It's won by DeVries. Back to Mohammed. Central, great first clear to start things on the kill. And it's been something they've been doing well is when they've been able to get possession right off a of faceoff, they clear it well. But Michigan has some speedy forwards, and they're right back into the zone. Here's one of them, DeFries had two goals last night, their 4 2 win. Drops it down low for Speaks, trying to get it in front, and unable to find room to shoot it was Shessel in front. And it's cleared out by Nathan Bottles up that far wall. Head coach for the Chippewas, Brennan Martin, has stressed the CMU team cannot play from behind in this third period. They have not won a game since 2022. So they have the lead in this one, and it bodes better for them. But CMU has a lead entering the third period. I should say after two periods, they're 7-0-2. They're only losses in overtime. That being against Saginaw Valley State and U of M Flint earlier this year. Fans want to call Nathan Bottles arguing that he got hauled down. And did, he's not going to get one. It did look like he got hauled down, but Devin, I'll remind you that, we're, that we came into this period tied at two. And when CMU has entered the third period tied, they are three and one. Very good point. And this one's still up for grabs, trying to wrap it around and up for grabs still. Look out, we got a flurry. Jay Nadu pushed his man up this near post, because I think that was William McGraw putting that one past. And look, the reason I make that point, yes, you're right. Three and one after two periods. But Central has barely held a lead in the third period all year. But when they do, it's so crucial for them to play from a lead. Michigan right now trying to desperately make some of this power play, which hasn't gotten going for them. 0 for 5 as we mentioned. 38 seconds left in this one, and we got now 10-21 left on senior night. Emotional favorites in this one. It's a packed barn. You've got men's division three supporters, some of the women's division two supporters as they're getting ready for what was a scheduled 7.30 <laughs> puck drop, but no way in heck they're getting to that. Well, we didn't we didn't get this game underway until 50 minutes after the warm-up started. We had to know we were gonna be a little bit late on that women's two game. No doubt, taking on number three out of the central region, Adrian, a big game. Upcoming for both those two teams. Before their playoff, one from the point, try, trying to be tipped in by Poppy. And Zabelson saw it the whole way. Yeah, Poppy did get a stick on it, diving after it in the slot. He's able to deflect it, but Zabelson at the top of his crease is able to make a good save. And how good Zavelson has been tonight out of Merrick, New York, the former USPHL All-Star, one of the locker room favorites on this team. Spent a lot of time with Division II. Over 30 games in his college career, but none bigger perhaps than this one. So it's Gavin Poppy as penalty expires. Michigan 0 for 6. The Chippewas remain perfect, down a man. Connor Place trying to hold the line. He'll cycle it down low where Poppy first bets to it. Gets checked hard by Bowerson. Met up across the way by Alpert who sends one well wide of the slot area. Two Chippewas get to it up this near wall, but it's ultimately Michigan who regains possession of it. Backhanded behind the net is a Horner. 
and after it, Devesh KC. And Nadu gets this one out of trouble, wants to put this puck in the air. Deflect Michigan away on the forecheck. Owen Campbell works over Alpern, has help coming with Jace Johnson in the second line. He'll swing it across for Hop. Skates wide with it, trying to center it up in front. It gets into lock, and he's gonna smother this and settle the things down. 8.54 to go. Final game of this regular season. These two teams will see each other next week in the first round of the MCHC tournament. Remember folks, this week is the second to last ranking period. We'll get another one next week which will determine the 16 teams going to the national tournament in St. Louis, Michigan, trying to be one of those 16 as the reigning national champions to defend their title. A lost night against this unranked CMU team who knows what it would do. And they've had some struggles in the past, Devin. Coming into this series, they had lost two straight against Oakland. Two one-goal games, mind you, but the a team that's ranked above them, it's tough when you lose those close games. They lost overtime 5-4, to four, and then 6-5 the next night. Or what you'd say, barn burners. Aaron Locke had to make 30-plus saves in both those games. Here come the Wolverines, though, trying to spring a four-check. Owen DeVries skates wide, 11 on 11. Robertson beat him to the puck. Centering feed in front, pedaled away by Zavelson out of harm's way. And Jace Johnson has time to speed, give his team work to change. Johnson trying to wind up with the shot, he got poke checked by Sullivan. Pinned to the boards now, taken over by DeVries. Evades traffic, gets it across for Rathmet, her upright wing. One touch pass to Mohamed over the blue line. He'll dump this one in on Zavelson, who wants to get a faceoff drawn, he will. And look out, something happened there with a streaking man in, Rathmanner. And he's hurt. Shaking that one off. Sableson's a tough dude. And he wanted a call there for him to have a call, but he's getting his mask knocked off there. And the referee and the linesman discussing it. Nothing's going to come of it. And Devin, you know, we've talked about all night about CMU playing in this third period, how difficult it has been for them. But when Michigan comes in tied, in the, set, in the third period, they also are three and one on the year. So two that means one thing, teams. somebody is gonna cut it. Change those trends. Central's trying to make themselves the benefactory of it. Vasilovic into the attacking zone with Bishop. They have done a great job possessing this puck over. The Central team wants it, they want it bad. It's Connor Place though. For Michigan, poke check by Bishop. Great job by this fourth line to negate any sort of chance for Michigan's second group. Finally, Bradley Shessel will find it. Connor Place, one on one against Ritter. Turnaround slap shot, blocked off the skate of Beamish. Off the ice he will go, rather that was Gilgrit. Place, gets it back in. Dallison off the glass for the switch. Up and on out, now it will be. Alpert, first to it will be a Chippewa. Owen Campbell, nifty bounce, trying to backhand this one in front and lost handle of that puck. That's a missed opportunity there for Vasilovic as this puck goes up and in the Michigan bench, Devin. But Vasilovic has Owen Campbell streaking up ice. He puts it about 10 feet too far for Campbell. And if, and if he puts it right on his tape, That's a breakaway. Campbell's in from the red line. Who knows game of inches. after that? We've seen a lot of breakaways, particularly that first period. If you were with us earlier, Michigan had a couple of odd man rushes of their own in the first 10 minutes. They scored on the first two minutes of the draw by Connor Chi for his 11th of the year. And then answering shorthanded was Connor Morgan. Not once, but twice had a chance to score shorthanded. Was on at that time trying to get it into a tough angle. Messina gets checked almost over the bench. Sam Horner drops the trailer for Poppy. Skates in after it. Porzonic one on one. Helped out by Bowerson. Oh, dog his man to the boards. A fight for it in that corner. The newly insane captain can't work it over. Rathmanner from the point. Second try blocked in front. Michigan trying to free up space. And first two it is Messina. He's got Owen Campbell with that stretch. Trying to get it off his body. And he couldn't swivel it under his wickets. Gives possession back to Michigan. 5.49 to go. The Chippewas 
unranked. First time in roughly five years they'll finish this year, in the regular season anyway, with an under 500 record. Devin gets one of the best in the MCHC. Right now they're trying to become 500 in the MCHC. And in order to do that, you got 526 remaining in regulation. You got to lock down defensively. This Michigan team is aggressive on the forward check. And you got you to gotta wonder when, they, when they're going to pull their netminder. That's going to give them even more advantage. You got to play lockdown D. Keep to your system defensively. Don't make any mistakes. We know these two teams will play each other next week from Crystal Fieldhouse. Reagan and I will have the call. There goes those balloons. <laughs> I was wondering when they were going to get taken oh, out. No. We finally did. But we'll be on the call for that, myself and Reagan. A time to be determined. Don't know where these two teams will play along the slate. Got a lot of games to work through. Eight teams in the MCHC East this year, thanks to Northwood. So one versus eight will play followed by two and seven. Right now, that means Lawrence Tech is looking at playing Adrian. Well, and right now with Oakland tying in overtime, right now they're tied with SBSU. SBSU would have the tiebreaker. 19 points for, for the both of them, but they have one fewer loss in regulation. So what that means is that the matchups are set for next week. With SBSU holding the tiebreaker over Oakland, Lawrence Tech is that number one seed. They'll take on Adrian. SVSU will take on Michigan. Flint, Oakland will play Northwood in a rematch of this weekend's series. And the Wolverines and the Chippewas will redo it. Still got something to play for in this one. 4.30 to go. Central. It's lobby. Their senior night. Send these guys home. Connor Place can't hold the line. Central gets some wholesale changes. Sailed across by DeVries, back into the zone. Arm in the air for Sablesen for the icing, and he's gonna get the call. It's gonna go all the way back down to Michigan zone. This is, this if is you're CMU, it's, it's been a lot better puck possession time, and that's really been the key for them, getting on the four check. Yeah, and not only has their puck possession been very good, they've done a really good job of winning those face-offs. It's been 50-50 throughout the year. Some, some days they've struggled. Tonight has been one of those better nights. They've been able to win face-offs and gain possession. Here they don't do so, though. It's Owen DeVries, two goals last night. Sails it into the slot for Rath Manor. Too strong for him. Porzana, Kennedy, tag team to take that puck away. Gains the red line, rims it around the boards. It'll be met up by Campbell at the wall. They'll drop it off for Porzana, goes back to Campbell. Shoots it in front, in lock. Oh my, unconfident. Finds it under his wickets, but that one bounced around a couple times. That's a great shot choice there by Owen Campbell. He's got the puck on his forehand, moving across the ice. He decides to shoot back against the grain, which forces Locke to reach out and make that save against his momentum. As he's following Campbell to the right there, it's an underrated great save there from Locke. Wolverines had six power play chances tonight and have not converted on any of them. Nine this week total. Central trying to hold their ground for the final 335 of this game. Martin Ice Arena, Josh Gilgren, first two into that far corner. Brendan Clements will rim this one around the board. Touched up by Nicholas Welch. Can't get it out of the air. Now it settles down for Poppy to the net. Backhand from a sharp angle, and Zabelson will glove that. Nothing's gonna come out of that little extracurricular between Schultz and Poppy behind the net with 3.21 to go in period three. Zabelson has played well in his return to the lineup, Devin. His first game since his first start since December 2nd. He's played well tonight. You know what's more and interesting too? Central has kept most of their seniors out here for this final surge. There's Michigan from the left wing, blocked out of the air and up out of play, but they have played the likes of Spencer Messina, Andrew Porzonic, Jay Nadu a ton in this game. It means they're relying on those guys to be that veteran presence you and I like to talk about and finish this game off. I mean, you got 10, Ten seniors this season, about a 30-year roster. And right now, they're the guys you turn to in times of need. And speaks in front, it's loose for Poppy, and he can't jam it home. 
It's still kept into the point by McGraw. Held by Hop. Great work to get out of the zone, and Bemis will clear it out. That's a great block by, uh, it, it was Messina at the point there. Hop's able to clean up the loose change and get it out. Centering feed for Bemis. Can't settle it down. Here's Chessel over the line. Stops on a dime, takes one, well wide. Isaac Hop will get there first to it, the freshman. Skates up right wing, his team's changing. Nice move, trying to get inside Zach Mohammed. He'll keep possession of it. Skirted in, paddled by Locke, out of harm's way. Bowerson holds the line. Porzonic moves it under his feet to the net area. Off that left post. Gets to a free area, and Michigan can't hold possession. Icing is called. The wind seems like the sails are taken out of Michigan. They cannot, for the life of them, crack on all of these opportunities. And they can't connect on passes. They're having trouble through the neutral zone. CMU has done a really good job disrupting, putting pressure on the Wolverines between the blue lines. It's forced them to make passes that normally a team of this caliber wouldn't make. And Michigan starting to feel crunch time here. They are going to take a timeout. Timeout by Michigan. We're going to keep it right here because we got to talk about this one and more. This game started in very dramatic fashion. Connor Chi put his 11th of the year, the sophomore, at the 139 mark. Assisted by Dylan Shelton and Sam Alpern. And then it took half of the, of the period and three Michigan power plays for Central to score shorthanded from Connor Morgan. He had not one but two breakaway chances. Missed on the first, did it the second time. It's a great move, great stretch pass, let out. Lucas Hutton was part of involved in that. And Central took the lead for Brandon Clements in the second period when things were getting chaotic. And that Clements goal is so was so important for the momentum to, of this yeah. game. Two that, that came two seconds after the Chippewas have killed off their second consecutive pe penalty within the span of about two minutes and five, or four minutes and five seconds. They didn't have that much time off the penalty kill, and that was really what swung the game in Central Michigan's favor, despite the fact that Rathmanner later tied it up. As you mentioned, Rathmanner did tie that up short-handed after Tommy Shea was given a five-minute game misconduct and sent off the captain for Michigan. But most recently, Brendan Schultz on senior night with his sixth of the year gave the Chippewas the lead with just about half of this game left to go. Now we're under the final 2-12 to go in this game. Almost under two minutes. Owen Campbell to the slot area, takes it on lock, and it's into the glass, into the netting. That's They're great, gonna take this play away. That's a great shot by Campbell. In traffic, he's harassed from behind. He's able to get the shot off nonetheless. Lock, a, a great save too to keep it and shoulder it up and out of play. This Michigan team, you gotta expect, as soon as they can clear the zone, is gonna attempt to pull Aaron, uh, uh, gonna attempt to pull Lock here. Michigan came into this series winning eight of the last 10. I've been present for a lot of those Michigan wins. One that comes to mind was that 2021-22 national tournament for Michigan. Went ahead with six minutes to go in the third, four to three. Scored on an empty netter. The likes of Brendan Nelson, Brendan Martin were scores in that game. It should have been the Chippewas. They want redemption tonight. 1.45 to go in Lock, this hockey game. Lock gone. is out of his net, empty net. The Wolverines, Central, wants to find possession of this puck. Porzonic tries to dump it out. Kept in at the line by place. Cycle that far wall, setting one on net. Well wide of the cage. Up this near side now, Rathmanner tries to center it back up, near the pass, Zabelson caught it on that far side. As looking to the rafters, Bradley Shessel nearly tied this game up. Yeah, if we can get a closer look at this on the replay, that Devin, might have been rather. that went off of a Chippewa skate out in front. Here's that second look, we see the shot, it goes all the way around the boards, it's kept in before it's thrown out in front, it goes off of Looks like it's Jake, or it's Lucas Hutton on the back door right onto the stick of that Michigan forward, and he throws it on. And they win the draw. Place from the point. That one's blocked away by Messina. 1.18 to go in this hockey game. Michigan puts it on net. Zabelson caught that with the right pad. In between that corner. Robertson tried to clear it out. It was hemmed along by DeVries. They freed up for Bottles. Flings it into the air, down the ice. It's a race for it between Place and Schultz. Connor will get there first. Schultz, the most recent goal scorer, has to get ready for the back check. 
Long stretch pass, connects to Mohammed from DeVries. Mohammed skates wide, well defended by Rapoon. 44 to go, it's up for grabs in the slot! And Zabelson puts the glove down. Wow, that puck sat there for what felt like ages, and he finds it. 42 seconds to go, Zabelson again remaining calm. He's a veteran of the ACHA, he's been in a lot of close games, and it's showing here the coolness under pressure, being able to locate that puck and smother it. Andrew Porzana can't win the draw. Michigan missed the shot from Sullivan. 38 now to go. They'll tie it up at the half wall to freeze. Gets it to place in front with the shot. Zabelson, another great stop. And they'll settle this skirmish on the right side of the net. Messina defending Zabelson. What great net minding. Again, it's a phenomenal sh shot, and this one goes off of his mask, Devin. He has to hold that up top as we get a look at the shot here by Place. It's right up in the mask, and it's loose for a minute, but he does a great job to gobble it up and make a great save. Mohamed to dig in against Porzondik. Mohamed won it back. Michigan cycles it down low behind the paint. Poppy trying to free this puck up. Porzonic is the man there. Central trying to kill time. 21 seconds left in this hockey game. Sullivan can't get it free. Now he will to this near corner. Hem to the boards by Messina. 12 seconds left. It's Michigan who frees it up to the point. One last shot. Place to the net. It's blocked in front. Robertson pins it off the glass. One timer. Fanned out by Poppy. One second left. The Chippewas. Empty netter score. They've done it! On senior night, the Chippewas upset the number 13 team. They take down Michigan in the final home game of the season. What a defensive effort, Devin. What CMU couldn't do last night, getting to the pucks first before Michigan blocking shots, they did tonight, most especially in the final two minutes keeping the pucks out in front of Zavelson, and boy, did he play well. I don't think that goal will count. I think it's 3-2, because I heard the buzzer before the puck went in. Either way, it's a phenomenal performance by CMU tonight, and what a way to finish out the season here at Martin. Game of the year. Chippewas win their fifth straight on home ice. They take down the Michigan Wolverines for the first time in three straight. And this Wolverine team will see these Chippewas again next week. But they split this season series at one apiece. These 10 seniors showed up. You could tell they wanted it from start to finish. And it's ultimately a senior who wins it for them. And Brendan Schultz, Sam Zabelson, the net miner, who wins it. And the new captain, Andrew Porzonik, will skate off victorious. We're gonna recap this one and more with myself and Reagan and get you ready for that first round of the MCHC tournament next week. Central Michigan wins their final game on home ice, three to two over the Wolverines on CCHN.
We're back with you for the post-game show as Central Michigan and Sam Zabelson have just knocked off the number 13 team, Michigan, on home ice. They remain five straight victories from Martin Ice Arena, and the last one is the sweetest. Sam, you saved 28 of 30 tonight in the win. First time since February 25th of 2019, Chippewas have beat the Wolverines in regulation. Thanks to you, heck of an effort, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate the compliments, but I couldn't have done it without the team in front of me. Yes, I am very proud of the 28 I stopped. Wish I could have had them all, but it's all right. Shout out to Joel Drucker for stopping all of them yesterday. But uh, on that note, it was nice to see the seniors step up. Uh, they gave Jay the empty netter, I believe, at the end there, as well as Schultz helping us out. And, uh, yeah. How difficult was that early third period? It was back and forth for so much of the period. It really seemed like every sequence had chaos. So many power plays for that team, and you stopped most of the shots they had on it. Tell us what it was like. Oh, it was really tough being that we had a bunch of breaks towards the end of the second. They um, caught us asleep on the four on three, I believe it was. But then after that, nice motivational talk in the locker room. All the seniors got together and... You know, we realized this is our last 20 minutes at home. we got to make it worthwhile, and we stepped it up, I think, defensively, offensively, all around, and yeah. They award you the puck in this game. We knew your credibility was up there for this team. Is this the biggest win of your career? To date, I believe so. Um, I think this is my proudest achievement on this team, uh, in addition to the Lawrence Tech tie that we had had earlier this yeah. season. But the hope is we can then carry this momentum going into playoffs. I believe we're playing these guys again here. Yeah. So I was just about to follow that up with you. You guys will take on Michigan in the first round of the MCHC tournament from Crystal Fieldhouse in Flint next week. You get a big win like this to split this series. After you guys came off a tough loss last week to Northville or Northwood, who's been playing good themselves, beat and tied Oakland. So tell us what the confidence level is now is it exuding how do you prepare mentally for a game next week at this team same team is going to be hungry to get revenge against you guys absolutely i think we're going to come ready to compete we're going to be riding high off of this win obviously um big night tonight with the families and all that involved and then next week i believe we played there earlier in the year and we beat u of m flint so if we beat another michigan team there no reason we can't do it again yeah crystal field house bolts well for the chippewas but tonight it's you guys that are victorious go celebrate this up with your team heck of an effort we'll see you later all right thank you very much all righty that's sam zavelson on the post game show reagan cleese will rejoin me in just a moment to recap this one And we're back for the post-game show. 3-2 to two, Central knocks off the number 13 team, Michigan. Reagan Cleves, what a crazy game. This was the first period was back and forth. The second had a lot of sparks. Tommy Shea, the captain, gets sent off. But it's ultimately Brendan Schultz with the game winner in a miraculous third period. This game had everything. It's all about composure and, cons and uh, persistence from the CMU team. They were taken down with a couple of costly, could have been costly penalties in that second period, but they kept their heads up and as soon as they killed that two seconds later Clements puts it in the back of the net and that was the momentum swinger for CMU that got this place up and roaring 
and they eventually are able to pull it out with Schultz's game-winning goal. What a goal it was. Chippewas were perfect on the penalty kill. Six for six, didn't capitalize on the man advantage, but we had two shorthanded goals in this game. Reminder, Central will take on Michigan next week in the MCHC tournament. Reagan, your three stars. Yeah, uh, first three, uh, third star of the game, Sam Zavelson had faced 32 shots tonight, stopped uh, 30 of them. He played really well tonight. Part of the reason this CMU team won in the backstop was so important down the stretch in that final two minutes. Second star of the game goes to Connor Morgan, a goal and an assist. His his shorthanded goal got things rolling for CMU. They were able to later gain the lead, and he got the assist on the game-winning goal from Brendan Schultz, who is our first star of the game. Getting that game-winning goal, putting the Central Michigan team over top the Wolverines in regulation for the first time since 2019. Morgan, Zabelson, and Schultz, your three stars. How fitting, two of those seniors. Reminder, Central right now is getting ready for a doubleheader. The women Chippewas are ready to take on Adrian College, number three against number two in the Central region. Parker Morrison and Ryan Donnelly have the call in that one, so don't go anywhere if you want to stick around for that game. We're going to wrap this one up from Martin Ice Arena. What a win on Senior Night, the final home game for Men's Division Three. They'll take on Michigan in the first round of the MCHC playoffs next week. But until then, for our entire staff here, Sam Tabashinsky, our producer, Trevor Wires, our cameraman, Michael Rosencrantz, running the PA for Senior Night. Great job. That's Reagan Cleese. I'm Devin Sarah, and thank you for watching this presentation of Central Michigan Division Three Hockey, the final score, CMU 3, 13 Michigan 2. Have a great night, everybody.